Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call. I'm going to open the meeting for the planning board, City of Brockton, December 6, 2022. First, going to read an opening statement. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspension, cert certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Chapter 38, Section 20. Real time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send comments or questions to the chair via question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay, a quick roll call of the planning board members. So Larry Hassan. Here. Jim Sweeney? Here. Okay, and Tony Gonzalez, the chair. Um, Rob, do you want to um, announce the issue of being down a board member? Uh, yes, for those of you who are um, following, uh, the planning board is a five-member board, and right now we have three sitting members that allows us to... Uh, vote on subdivisions and for um, site plan review. The issue is that the uh, cases for returned to ZBA require seven, excuse me, require four out of five votes because it is a five member board, even though there's only three currently appointed. So it's a little snafu with the law. And so we're not able to um, hear those cases. So they will all be um, continued to January and hopefully uh, we'll be working with the mayor to get some appointments made. And also, if you're listening at home and you would like to be on the planning board, um, please send the mayor an email uh, with your resume. Okay, thank you. So in addition to Rob and um, his staff, Evan Sears and Isaiah Thewell, we have Deputy Chief Edward Williams and Megan Shave. Megan, your um, position is? I'm the conservation agent. Okay, thank you. All right, I will um, review the agenda for this evening. Um, but first, let me announce if you are here for return to ZBAs, as Rob mentioned, 1449 Main Street continued. Return to ZBA, 48 North Pearl Street continued. 124 Bradley Ave continued. 159 North Main Street continued. And I think that is all of them, correct, Evan? That's all, yes. And they'll be continued to January 19th is the January meeting. All right. Um, still on the agenda tonight, number one, open space and recreation plan update. We have a site plan approval for NAP Center on West Chestnut Street. Applicant is Lynch Towing and the representative is J.K. Holmgren. We have a site plan approval for 680 Center Street. Applicant is Siemens, representative J.K. Holmgren. And then we have a site plan approval for Zero Falmouth Ave. Applicant is West Rochester Village LLC, representative of ET Engineering Enterprises. We also have a preliminary subdivision, 262 Winter Street, 34 Kent Street. The applicant, Cruise Property Realty Trust, Representative William P. Self. And then uh, lastly, de definitive subdivision plan for Arthur Estates, the applicant, Rockwood Realty Trust, Representative Jacobs Drill, Driscoll Engineering. Uh, first, we're going to review for the acceptance of the meeting for November 22nd. Did the board members have a chance to review? Uh, yes, motion to accept. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Son. Yes. Jim Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. And Evan, no ANRs, lot leases, or return of surety? Nope. Okay. And no street acceptance and no proposed zoning change. All right. Did the board members have a chance to review the open space recreation plan number one on the plan? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. So if it looks good to you or if you have questions, any questions? 
is there any quick overview that Rob could give us just to, you know, briefly so the public would understand as well, if you wouldn't mind? I was going to ask Megan Shave, Dr. Okay. Shave, to uh, make that presentation. Very good. Thank you. Yes, so I'm happy to present uh, this draft of the city's 2022 update of the open space and recreation plan. Uh, the open space and recreation plan as a bit of background, it's a framework that was designed by the state division of conservation services in the 90s um, as a method to guide towns and cities both to take inventory of their existing open space and recreational opportunities and also to guide their acquisition, development, and management of open spaces and to further incentivize uh, towns and cities to adopt and update their open space plans. The Division of Conservation Services has made their various grant programs contingent on having an updated open space and recreation plan. So the DCS um, distributes various open space funds, including um, the parkland acquisitions and renovations for communities grant, also known as the park grant, which has funded renovations for several parks uh, throughout the city in recent years. So again, in order to remain eligible for those types of funding opportunities, the city needs to update its open space and recreation plan every seven years. So our last update was in 2013, meaning that it expired in 2020. Um, so since late 2019, I've been leading an open space and recreation plan working group made up of a variety of representatives of various stakeholder groups involved in open space and recreation in the city. Uh, so working through the COVID state of emergency, we reevaluated our inventory of open space and recreational facilities. We carried out our public input process, which included a survey that we had up from 2020 all the way through March 2022 that residents could participate in. We originally had in-person um, input events that were canceled due to COVID. We switched those over to Zoom events. And then when guidelines allowed, we had an in-person event at the Council on Aging and also an in-person event at the NAACP STEM Week, which in particular um, was an interactive exhibit for kids where they built their own park using various um, options for adding um, sports, trees, anything they wanted to our sample park landscape. And so with that, the Open Space Working Group um, put together a list of eight goals for open space and recreation planning in the city for the next seven years, and then an action plan which outlines the framework of how the city might achieve those eight goals. And so at this time, we have a working draft that we have posted to the city website for the public to take a look at. It's accessible through specifically the Conservation Commission's webpage on the city website and also the Open Space Facebook group. Um, you can find the link there. And we are also seeking letters from the various stakeholder groups in the city, including the planning board, to show that the city supports uh, this updated plan to submit to DCS and um, become our open space plan for the next seven years. Thank you, Megan. Any questions? All right. Is there a motion? All right. Motion to accept. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Jim Sweeney. Yes. Larry Son. Yes. And Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, Matt you, Sector. <clears throat> Is Lynch's towing J.K.I. Holmgren ready to be moved up to a panelist? I'm going to move Scott. 
And Scott, is there anybody else joining you? Sorry, that guys. Uh, I believe I'm alone. You believe you're alone. Yep. We're just going to leave you out there to hang. <laughs> As usual. All right. Thank you. All Madam right. Chair, we're ready. All right. Is uh, Scott going to put his uh, presentation up? Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, good evening. Scott Ferry, Home Grid Engineering. <laughs> representing Lynch's Towing to share a screen. I don't suppose you see that. Not, Not yet. yet. Uh, nice color rendering that I'm hoping to share with you folks. That's not it. There we are. Well, we can see the title color rendering. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We can see it now. If you could close the thumbnail section, it'll make the page a little bit bigger. Is that? Beautiful. Thank you for your patience as usual, folks. All right. So what we have is a, a long-standing project for Lynch's Tone. It's been kicking around City Hall for four or five years now. Uh, just as a, a little background, uh, Lynch has his uh, towing operation on Montello Street. And uh, it's directly abutting the MBTA train station. Uh, it's kind of been a, a valuable piece of property that the city uh, has hoped to, uh, to have it redeveloped into a residential project. That project was approved again, going back about three or four years ago by the planning board, by the Board of Appeals, and uh, is pretty close to uh, getting ready to start construction. As part of that approval, Mr. Lynch needed a place for his towing operation. It needs to be within the city limits because of all the towing that he does, uh, not only for the city, uh, for the police department, but for the, the bus services, uh, state police, access to highway. So he really needed something in Brockton, and uh, he acquired the majority of this piece that we're looking at here on uh, West Chestnut and Knapp Center from the city. Uh, we went to the Board of Appeals way back then in, in 2020. And at that point, we realized that uh, the reason that the site looks a little bit different from all the neighboring sites, it's about a 10-foot a hill uh, just within the limits of our property. The reason it's a 10-foot hill is it was used by the city as a solid waste dump. Uh, primarily in the 30s and 40s, but even going up to the up to the 60s, and it was primarily used as a solid waste dump to handle debris uh, from a series of hurricanes that we had uh, back then in the 30s and 40s. Uh, the site was capped, although not officially with DEP, but it was capped with loam, just allowed to to lay vacant. It uh, vegetated uh, just naturally. And then Mr. Lynch bought it four or five years ago. We started this process. Uh, the very first thing we needed to do, because it's a solid waste site, was deal with DEP Solid Waste Management Division. Uh, we've gone through years of, of work with them. Uh, we've come to the point 
where we have an agreement uh, in principle with DEP and we're, we're working towards 100% approval, but we, we pretty much have a blessing from them uh, that would allow us to proceed with this plan here. And the, and the plan is to basically excavate the 10 to 14 feet of, uh, of debris that's on the site, sift it, and, uh, to really oversimplify it, come up with a pile of debris and a pile of dirt. The debris will be trucked off, the dirt will be tested, and if it's uh, essentially clean material, it'll be placed back on the site. If it's found to be contaminated, that will also be trucked off site, in which case the entire site will have clean fill brought in. Uh, so that's the uh, the process that we'll be going through, that DEP is, uh, is working <clears throat> towards an approval of that process. Uh, the final step for DEP to give us their approval is to get city approval. Uh, so as part of the site plan process, we need to go to Conservation Commission first. We received an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission for this plan that you see before you back early in November. Uh, we filed with, with them probably in the summertime, went through an extensive review uh, with Beta Engineering, the, uh, the Conservation Commission's consultant. Uh, Beta reviewed the, the drainage and the stormwater uh, management facilities proposed to make sure we're in accordance with uh, with Brockton's guidelines and DEP stormwater guidelines. Uh, as I said, we received their approval in November, which allowed us to proceed uh, with this site plan approval. So uh, the plan is to access the site off of Knapp Center. Uh, we have a, a, a large building right there, which will be Mr. Lynch's towing facility. Uh, in front of his facility will be customer parking. All in the back will be the uh, the tow yard, basically is his storage for the towed vehicles. There will also be an access out to West Chestnut Street uh, between the AUKUS building and the YMCA. Uh, the entire property uh, will be fenced in uh, for security reasons, will be fenced in. Uh, we have, you can see the green space that we have proposed around the perimeter of the property. We also have uh, a series of uh, a couple of different drainage areas proposed. We have a couple of infiltration systems uh, that are being proposed and that were uh, approved by both conservation and beta. And we also have a surface detention basin uh, up at the, the top corner, the southerly corner of the property, uh, abutting an existing wetland area. Uh, so that is, uh, that's basically the plan, Madam Chair. The, the plan that you see there, it, it would provide uh, parking for 504 vehicles, uh, a combination of the towed vehicles and then the, the customer and employee spaces, but it would be a total of 504 uh, spaces. The entire site, the, there has been some confusion and some discussion, again, going way back years uh, in years past, but the entire site will be paved. It's bituminous concrete, black top. Uh, for the entire site that uh, that you see in front of you as being gray. So uh, there is no uh, gravel parking proposed that will be entirely paved. Okay, good. That was going to be my first question, just to verify it was going, it's going to be paved. And um, it's my understanding, Rob, that these lingering issues regarding the contamination have to be dealt with at the state level and not the planning board. Uh, that is correct. We did receive a memo from <clears throat> the city engineer uh, who was not uh, involved in the conservation commission process. And so he did not have any of the, the state documentation, but uh, they have done extensive testing um, and design of the facility. And uh, you heard Scott uh, explain how the material will be uh, excavated, sifted, um, and and judged whether or not it can be reused or not on the site. So DEP is going to be extremely involved in the redevelopment of this site. Okay. Uh, questions from the planning board? I think I'm good. All right. How about uh, Chief Deputy Williams? No. <clears throat> Excuse me, the fire department's good. All right. Is this open for the public? Yes, ma'am, it is. So if anyone uh, in the public would like to uh, make a comment or uh, provide 
testimony about this project, please um, use the raise your hand button uh, at the bottom of the screen. If you hover your cursor over at the bottom, you'll see a menu that pops up and you'll see a, a, a sign that looks like a hand raised. And uh, that will allow us to identify you and unlock your microphones. And Madam Chair, at this time, I do not see anyone with their hands raised. Okay, uh, so we'll go back to the planning board. Is there a motion? We're looking to continue this, correct? No, we're gonna approve motion it. Motion to approve with okay. conditions. Second. And so okay. should I, do you want me to read in the conditions? There's quite a few yeah. of them, okay. Yes. Well, Madam Chair, one, before you do that, one of the conditions about combining the parcels we don't need to uh, add that in any longer. That can be taken out. Okay. Okay. So motion to approve with the following conditions, approval of the subject to and contingent upon final approval of mass DEP. Copies of the following state permits must be provided, solid waste, closure, remediation, and post-closure use. Shade trees will be added to the four parking islands on the northeast portion of the property. Second that. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, roll call. So Larry Sun? Yes. Jim Sweeney? Yes. And Tony Gonzalez, a yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, folks. All right, so next we have 680 Center Street. Again, um, Scott with J.K. Holmgren, site plan approval. Uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. Uh, Scott Farrier, Holmgren Engineering for Siemens Industry Incorporated. And Siemens has kind of an interesting project <clears throat> looking to uh, put up solar canopies at the existing signature hospital on Center Street. Attempt again to share my screen. Well, that's the one we just looked at. Uh, You see that? Yes. Yes. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, the bottom of the page is Senna Street. Heading up the right side is Libby Street. The left side is Adam Street, the entire campus of, uh, of Signature Healthcare. So essentially the, the front parking areas are uh, what they're looking to do. They have a a series of four canopies, canopy one, canopy two uh, in front of the main entrance, canopy three is down the lower corner between Libby and Center Street, and then canopy four uh, over on the, the side closest to Adams and in Center Street. So uh, there is, there's no changes to the parking lot. Uh, everything's remaining the same, uh, access, egress, emergency exits, parking spaces, everything's pretty much staying the same. The, the one thing that we're allowed to do by uh, building these canopies, the first thing is they, they get to repave these parking areas, it, which it, a lot of the parking me, areas Scott? are in. Yes. I'm sorry, the drawing that you have up, um, C4, it's yes. very difficult to see the outline of where the hospital itself is. And I don't know if you have a better drawing for the planning board to take a look at. Uh, maybe C4. Okay. It's a little busy, but yes. That's busy, but again, just as a as an overview, I guess. Uh, so by them building the four canopies, they basically get to repave uh, or just overlay the existing parking area. So that was a, a big improvement uh, that the hospital was looking to do. That There are a few of these parking areas that are in rough shape. Uh, so we're providing a canopy. It's basically a covered parking over those four parking areas. Uh, because of that, it, it also gives us the opportunity to do a, a little bit of drainage improvements on the site. Uh, by having the, the canopies, we're able to capture that rainfall that would be hitting the canopy uh, and sending that into the, uh, into the drainage system as clean water and uh, basically taking the uh, Taking the the brunt of the of the parking lot water out of the drainage system, uh, water that could potentially be contaminated uh, just by the vehicles, uh, in introducing the clean water as opposed to the dirty water from the uh, from the parking lot. So 
Uh, in order to do that, we have, I'm gonna just switch pages for a second, even though it's harder for you to see. Uh, in order to do that, we have these red drainage areas uh, that show the, the roof drainage from the canopies tying into a series of manholes that eventually tie into the existing drainage system out of the hospital. Uh, there's a series of, of catch basins and manholes that currently exist. We'll be adding a, a large storm scepter unit uh, right here in front of canopy four. Uh, that storm scepter unit uh, provides a, a great deal of stormwater management benefits that currently don't exist on the site. So it's a, a great improvement on the uh, on the stormwater management that's going out there currently. So that's a, a quick overview of what we're looking for, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Questions from the board? Are there any other images of anything similar to this that can kind of get a better understanding from a parking lot, you know, picture like that? Yeah, I mean, is, there, is there a picture of the, you know, the apparatus itself of the, you know, of what it is itself? of like where it's placed <clears throat> right there at the bottom of this detail sheet mrs sweeney is the canopy uh in this case it's canopy site number three which is uh the one closest to libby and center street uh it is make sure i'm giving you the right numbers but it's about about 150 feet long uh in this in this distance here, covers the entire, uh, that entire parking lot. And uh, it's about, at the lowest, it is about 14 feet high, and it goes all the way up to 20 feet high. So uh, vehicles will have no problem getting underneath it. Uh, fire trucks will be able to, to get under and, and around it uh, with ease. And uh, that is that is the structure. And what, how did how much snow can it hold in the roof? How does that, does it melt off? Does it hold a certain amount of weight? It does. It primarily melts off. Okay. Is it, does it, it warm? Trapped. Okay. Yep. And then, you know, gets caught into the gutters and the downspouts. Okay. All right. Scott, well, I structurally, see it there's, on, there's not on Adam Street, right? It's not Libby Street. You mentioned Libby Street, but isn't it facing Adam Street? Adam Street would be canopy number four, Madam Chair. Just go back to that overview. Uh, right here where I'm moving my cursor around, that would be canopy number four at Adam Street. Hmm. Libby hey. Street is over here on the right-hand side of your page. Yeah, I'm looking at the staff report and I see a different um, markup, but as long as uh, those that were part of this review, Rob, this this is what you know the plan to be? Uh, yes, it is, Madam Chair. Okay. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I could, is the power meant to sustain the hospital or to be resold? Uh It'll be a little bit of, of both. It'll, it'll sustain the hospital, and then the excess gets uh, gets sold back on to uh, back out into the grid. Okay. okay, Larry, any questions? I'm just making a few notes. Nope, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. So, what would be the standard conditions with this, uh, Mr. May? I knew you were going to ask. Um, hang on just a second because I've lost my, I was looking up something on the internet uh, for a solar field. The standard conditions um, have been uh, met because we have the extra landscaping added in the plan. Um, we are um, making improvements to the stormwater system and um, uh, we've also measured to make sure that the uh, fire tracks and other emergency vehicles will be able to circulate the site without any interference. So I would um, not put any additional standard 
or any additional conditions on this plan. All right. Okay, is this open to the public? Yes, it is, Madam Chair. So, ladies and gentlemen, anybody wishing to make comment on this, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen, and we will unlock your microphone to allow you to provide testimony or ask questions of the board. <laughs> And at this time, Madam Chair, I do not see anyone with their hand raised. All right, thank you. Is there a motion? A motion to approve with standard conditions. Second. Okay, roll call. Jim Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, folks. You know, have a good evening. Happy holidays to all. You too. Thank Next, you. Next, we have a site plan approval for Zero Falmouth Ave. Uh, Representative ET Engineering Enterprises. Um, and would the representative please use the raise your hand function so we can uh, promote you to panelist. Evan, do you see the representative there? Hmm. I don't. I'm not sure who it is. Let me see if I can find a name. Would the representative from ET Engineering please use the raise your hand function? Falmouth Ave, please raise your hand. <clears throat> um, Madam Chair, let's move on to the next item and maybe they were having some audio okay. video problems. So we'll move on to preliminary subdivision 262 Winter Street, 34 Kent Street. William P. Self is the representative. And Bill Self. And you should be transferring over shortly. There you are, sir. Ted, I'll move over. Or Todd, excuse me, sir. Madam Chairman? Yes. I just spoke with Mr. Tory from Falmouth Avenue, and they were expecting to be on about 7 o'clock. He's on his way to the engineering office now. They'll be on very shortly. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Williams. Or Deputy Chief Williams, excuse me. So, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Self is here to uh, make his presentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please put hands up. Good evening. Uh, Bill Self, Curly, and Hanson. Uh, along with us this evening is Todd Pilling, uh, the engineer in the project. Uh, also to be uh, joining us is, here he is, is Matthew Costa. Uh, he's the attorney representing the, the property owner, Dave Cruz. Uh, he'd, like to, he'd like to start the presentation. Uh, myself and Todd would certainly, you know, jump in with any technical questions or anything additional we think the board might, uh, might uh, in, you know, want to hear about the project. So if Matthew, uh, Matthew, you can introduce yourself and take over. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Um Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the board. Uh, my name is Matthew Costa. I'm with the law firm Gain Gate PC at a time, uh, representing uh, the um, applicant David Cruz, um, Cruz Properties. And so uh, what this is, is a preliminary uh, subdivision application uh, for uh, land off of Winter Street and Penn Street. Uh, specifically, this is a this is a reconfiguration of the parcels uh, 262 Winter Street, uh, 34 Kent Street, and there's a uh, landlocked parcel um, that's part of this assemblage that's being reconfigured um, as a uh, residential subdivision. Um, perhaps, um, Mr. Self, if you could share his screen, you might be able to show the subdivision plan to the board. Thank you. Yeah, if you could. Uh... 
we could try this if I have any issues. Uh, hopefully, Todd can jump in on, and uh, he's got them as well. The total land, the total land area involved is about three acres. Uh, so there's an existing house on 262 Winter Street uh, that has about um, two acres of land associated with it. That's sort of um, up in the back. It's sort of an unusually shaped <laughs> lot. Uh, there's another landlocked piece that's about uh, six tenths of an acre. And then there's the house at 34 Kent Street. Um, it's about um, a quarter of an acre. So altogether, there's about three acres involved. Uh, the, the, the reconfiguration will allow the extension of Kent Street, where right now 34 Kent Street sort of blocks the end of Kent Street. Um, and there's no cul-de-sac uh, or, or turnaround at the end of 34, just dead ends. Mr. Costa? Yes. Um, could you hold off for just a second while Bill or Todd brings that uh, drawing up? And I think Bill's having a hard time with that. So maybe Todd can jump in first. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Thank you, Rob. If you don't know this area, it's hard to imagine it. Thank you, sir. Okay. So can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. All right, so that's the existing configuration of the um, uh, the parcels involved. And so as you can see, there's a, the house at 34 Kent Street, sort of, it just cuts across the end of Kent. And so the uh, plan is to extend Kent Street uh, to have a cul-de-sac, you know, in, in accordance with the, you know, the requirements of the, the planning board that doesn't exist now, uh, and to create um, six lots with frontage on Kent Street and a seventh lot for the existing dwelling at 262 Winter. Um, part of this is also that the, the, the present, the water line for Kent Street presently dead ends at Kent Street. And so part of this proposal is the water line will be extended along the uh, sort of the extension of Kent Street and then down um, across to Winter Street. So this will result in the looping of that water line that presently dead ends. And it will also create a turnaround for you know emergency vehicles and and whoever else that would you know travel down um, Kent Street, where right now uh, the larger vehicles have to uh, the way it's presently configured would have to back down Kent Street, and that that presents issues with backup alarms and and that type of thing. Um, the uh, the, the, the process that, that we have, you know, according to the way um, uh, this procedure has to work in the city of Brockton, uh, the land is in an R1C zoning district, uh, which requires 30,000 square foot lots and 175 feet of frontage. And those of you who are familiar, familiar with this neighborhood, I think it's fair to say that the lots in general in this area do not conform with that, but that is the zoning standard. And so we have lots shown on the plan that they, they fit in with the neighborhood, uh, but they don't quite meet the R1C um, zoning requirements. So the, the, the plan is to obtain the preliminary subdivision approval and then present this plan to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the necessary variances. There's some variances that are needed for lot area. Um, for um, lot frontage and for lot width. Um, and uh, if the board would like, we can you know, discuss further the dimensions of, of these lots. Um, but once the Zoning Board of Appeals, if it approves these variances, then the next step would be to come back for the definitive approval. And at that point, uh, obviously, there'll be a much more involved um, review of, you know, stormwater management and drainage and uh, that type of thing. Although these plans do have quite a bit of detail in that regard, I believe for a for a preliminary um, subdivision plan. So, um, you know, we think that there's some significant benefit to the neighborhood and to the you know to the community from this plan because it'll result in the cul-de-sac on Kent Street. We'll be able to loop that water line that presently dead ends. And um, you know, the area in question, it's sort of like a back 
like there was the landlocked uh, piece back there. And, and right now it's kind of an unimproved area in what is otherwise sort of a, um, a, a kind of a complete neighborhood. So this would, we, we submit, it would tie in with the existing, um, you know, surrounding neighborhood and, and, and kind of um, complete this area at the end of Kent Street that's kind of at the presently um, sort of underutilized and, and um, uh, could use some improvement. And so, um, you know, there's other benefits shown on the plans like this, uh, you know, there's some nice landscaping proposed. There's also a uh, hydrant right now at the end of Kent Street that's, it's, it's actually on 34 Kent Street. So this would bring that hydrant off of private property and actually put it within a public um, layout. So uh, we're, we're pleased to present this plan. We think it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a very nice plan. And um, Bill Self, if you have any other details that you, you would like to speak to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I think in general, uh... I think uh, we had a preliminary meeting, you know, uh, for discussion. And uh, I think you can see that just the improvement of the that single lot where 34 Kent is existing, how it was, you know, as it is now compared to uh, the much more symmetrical and, and a much larger lot uh, than, than it was. Uh, it, it, that and the other house uh, that was existing out of 262 Winter Street uh, still leaves that with a you know ample area around uh, around uh, the, the existing dwelling itself, and with the addition of the uh, easement, certainly help with the services, uh, water pressure, and as you mentioned, uh, you know for that for that entire street. Uh, again, it's a dead end. It's not. Traffic's note, you know, the concern for coming in and out is going to be the same uh, as Kent Street. There's only one Kent down to down to Bourne Street and then uh, on to Winter Street would be the most direct uh, way to get there. Again, there are single family homes. Uh, you can see uh, the roadway itself. The drainage would be handled, uh, basically taking more, almost all the water down to this cul-de-sac area. Uh, and into a drainage area, uh, drainage easement uh, that will be on lot three and possibly on, uh, on lot two. Uh, we do note that uh, some of the comments from the engineer was uh, he would like to see it an individual lot. Uh, in this particular case, we, we, we would like to provide something of that, but it would really uh, take up the, both at least one of the lots, we'd lose one of the lots in there. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a retention area. Uh, we'll have adequate access, uh, as you can see on this plan, a roadways down each side and another, you know, throughway in the back portion of it for access and cleaning. It'll be loomed and seated. Uh, we've done these in a couple other subdivisions and they've, uh, they've worked where the homeowners will maintain uh, them under the easement. Uh, conditions. So we'd like to uh, like to sit down and talk to the uh, address that with the engineer with the engineering department uh, uh, in one, as one of his comments. But uh, once we get, we'd like to get to the board of appeals uh, and ask for their <coughs> approval, and then certainly all the items or any items that, that have concerns brought up through both. Uh, this preliminary, the review and the Board of Appeals will be added to the plans under the definitive stage. Uh, again, we, we feel it's a, it's, a, it's a nice project for the site. Most of the lots in here match or are a little, uh, a little larger than most of all the surrounding lots, as you can see in some of the areas that are, that are noted on the abutting lots. So, uh, Mr. Self? Yes, sir. Could, um for the board go through the size of the different lots and then um, uh, let people know what the adjacent lots are size-wise to, to show how it um, pretty much matches the existing area. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Todd, I can just get me back to that, uh, that first uh, number sheet three or four, I believe. <clears throat> Uh, that should be good. 
That's good. Down a little bit, Todd, if you would, uh, towards Winter Street, the opposite way. Here we a little more. Yeah, you can see that uh, that most of the lots, if uh, you could just increase that a little bit, most of the lots to the rear are on uh, uh, the back the back street there. Uh, Oddsley, I believe it's Oddsley, Oddsley Circle. Uh, most of them are adjacent lots, or adjacent to lot number one, uh, which is 10,000 square feet, 10,251. The lot to the rear of that is 12,458. The next lot, uh, which is lot two, 12,931 proposed. The lot directly behind that is 11,161. Uh, going down Oddsley uh, Circle, the next lot, 13,140. And our lot three is actually 20,538 square feet. Uh, you see that parcel A was, is, was requested by one of the neighbors that he'd like to uh, be able to own that property to just give himself a little bit more of a, a backyard, uh, you know, coming in uh, off of Larson, Larson Ave. Uh, moving out towards Winter Street, uh, there's two or three lots running down Winter Street that, uh, of course, uh, lot, lot four being proposed. Uh, the existing house that we're creating and leaving as a lot would be 11,814 lot five. Uh, the two adjacent lots on Winter Street, uh, number 268, I believe, is 5,968. And uh, the next one would be 10,924 opposed to, again, lot five with 13,500. The lot in the very, uh, uh, that would consist of the existing house 34 in itself is 19,000. So the adjacent lot being 14, and I think the other one up towards, uh, towards off of Kent Street is 10,590, 95 square feet. So you see in majority, most all of our lots either, you know, are the same or, or a little larger than uh, most all of the adjacent and the budding lots. So it's consistent with the neighborhood, uh, something that we, you know, we know that the, the boards, uh, both the planning board and the board of appeals uh, certainly like to, uh, to see that it's, it'll be, you know, um, it's not changing the complexion of that, of that neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There's a lot of information. Um, I don't have any questions. The planning board. Madam Chair, it's Larry. Um, just on the um, lot three where the retention pond is, is that going to be an open area or is it fenced off? I, I, I don't recall well, some of these if it's a like a security situation for children or things like that. And who maintains it? Yeah, right now we uh, the ones that we have put on we've we've done one up in uh, on Linwood uh, off of Linwood Street uh, uh, that that it's maintained by uh, up there they, they they had formed an association uh, they maintain uh, you know everything that needs to be maintained on it uh, because it's a retention area where you don't have water remaining in it after storm events, it's designed to drain empty. So that's another reason where it's loomed and seeded. Uh, the neighbor on, on, on lot two uh, and lot three would both be responsible for some maintenance on, on each portion of it. Uh, in this particular case, it would be mostly on lot three. But until such time that the city decides to take, uh, you know, take it over as a public way uh, to be, you know, to be combined with Kent, Kent Street uh, portion, uh, then it would, uh, it, it would be, you know, still maintained as a, as a retention area. Uh, we found that uh, a, a lot of times is if they loomed and seeded and they drain dry, then you don't have the collection of rubbish. You don't have things blowing around uh, if it's, if we found if it's fenced, uh, certainly if it was a, de a, a retention area where it didn't drain, then it would be a safety factor. This way, 
people actually maintain it as part of their yard and they keep it landscaped. Okay, well, thank you for correcting me on that. So I, that's, I think a lot of times the abutters, you know, have concerns about that or even the people that would be purchasing in there. And, and they're pretty easy to maintain. So just, it's like a landscaping, kind of a maintenance type of an issue that a homeowner that, that, would do. Yeah, that's pretty much the only the only uh, real maintenance that uh, over depending on the sedimentation buildup, you'll see there's a four bay sedimentation four bay. Everything coming directly off the street would be put in that four bay, and then that leaches in to the overall storage area again during a certain storm event. When it stops raining, the the, the water drains out, you know, to the to the bottom, you know, dry. Uh, so you, you remain still having just a, you know, a seated area, you know, that would be maintained mode, that type of a, a situation. Thank you. That's all I had. I appreciate yeah, it. Madam, Thank you. Madam Chair, if I could, um, as far as utilities, do we plan on putting those underground? Yeah, for the most part, uh, they're all underground from the end of Kent Street coming through. Uh, as far as the electric, they'll tell us where, where they want them, where the, where the pull boxes, things like that. Okay. Uh, um, same thing if we had an opportunity for gas, they, they pretty much, you know, show it, show it uh, where they want it. So. All right. So there'll be no polls on this cul-de-sac. They are not proposed. If, if for some reason that the, the, the utility company changes that, that reason, then that I, I don't think they would, but it, it all, it's all designed for underground. Okay, thank you. All right, um, is this open to the public, Rob? Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody who would like to make comment on this project, um, uh, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. And um, just to let people know, again, this is the preliminary subdivision. It will then, uh, if it's approved by the planning board, it goes to the zoning board of appeals uh, for another public hearing. Yay. And uh, the zoning board will determine if the lots size and frontage uh, are worthy of a variance. If they are, then they come back to the planning board for a final definitive subdivision. And at this time, I do not see anyone with their hand raised. Oh. Yes, here we go. Um, Representative Dubois and Representative, your microphone should be unlocked. Wonderful, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, I'm just, I just have a couple questions. Can, can I ask what, what brings a preliminary subdivision before you? What what is that's my question. What brings a preliminary subdivision before you? What's the purpose of, of a preliminary subdivision? Is it here for a reason? Is it one of those things where they went to the zoning board and were denied and have to come back within three years, or is it something different? What is it? I have no idea. No, under the state uh subdivision law and uh Apologize, I can't quote it right off the top of my head, but I think it's, uh, well, I'm not even going to try to quote it off the top of my head. I'm sorry. But there's a citation that I'll send to you tomorrow. Uh, there are two different forms of, of subdivision. The preliminary form allows the board to review the plan in a little bit more detail and to um, provide the zoning board with some level of comfort that the project has been reviewed. It then um, has a specific time period. I think it's 145 days after the preliminary subdivision in which it has to be approved as a definitive subdivision. So or not, not like, approved or it has to be approved? Oh, the, it, it, it needs to be acted upon. Okay, okay. And um, at what point does like a city engineer or someone of that sort uh, unless there's someone on this board, look at this um, to just take a look before you pass it to the zoning board with some assurances that their variance is going to be okay for like uh, flooding and stuff like that. Has the, city engineer, the city engineer has, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You didn't. 
the city engineer has been uh, involved in the review of the plans. Right. And what issues did he find? I saw some letter and I'm just trying to understand it. What issues did he find in his letter? There was some letter in the documents about. Evan, about do you what? have that? I'm going to look right now. Give me a second. I should also let the public know that just having a definitive subdivision or a preliminary subdivision does not mean that they can begin to build anything. It's just a paper plan that uh, shows that it's been reviewed uh, by city and uh, the planning board. Mr. Uh, Rob, if I could jump in for one quick second. Um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we, we do, uh, uh, we, we did see the letter from Chiquiti, your town, your city engineer, and the few points that he brought up, uh, certainly we, we, we went over and uh, once, we, once we get our permission from the Board of Appeals to be able to actually physically come into the plan board with a definitive subdivision submittal, all those issues will be, will be addressed as well. So just, he just had a couple of minor things, you know, that, that he brought up for us to take a look at. Uh, those all of those issues will be taken care of, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know all the neighbors being you know certified notifications uh, and to be able to come to both the board of appeals hearing and that definitive subdivision hearing. Have they been uh, invited to this meeting? Uh, under the preliminary under the preliminary subdivision submittal, they're, they're not required to be uh, notified. It's really for the planning board to review and to make recommendations so we could, we could add to uh, and then come back with a definitive submittal uh, addressing all those concerns. Okay, uh, so, this, um, so it, this time around, um, if a, a res have you already spoken to residents about the number of um, lots that you're proposing in their neighborhood? Yeah, in this particular case, uh, we already we've had two separate over the last couple of years. We've had two separate uh, on-site meetings with in, invited abutters. Uh, Councillor uh, Lally had had uh, thankfully sent out you know anyone anyone who wasn't about uh, wanting to come down and attend our you know we call them neighborhood meetings, but you know we do that on all the subdivisions. They try to get in for, for, from the neighbors. We know. You know what the basic concerns are, and if somebody you know comes forward and addresses something, we certainly try to incorporate it in our design. Oh, that's uh, great! Then, when did you have those meetings? Uh, they were they were a, a, the first meeting we had when we first started the project uh, a couple of years ago, and then uh, we had one. Uh, I want to say within the last seven eight months, uh, basically all the the plans that the planning board has in front of them is what we showed the uh, the neighbors. We had it uh, open, you know, an open site meeting right there at the end of Kent Street. Oh, that's great. So I appreciate that. Um, so Rob, can you please follow up with me and tell me so I can look in to see about this notification and the fact that the people in the neighborhood weren't notified of this preliminary subdivision? I'd like to just see that for myself. I'll, that I'll send you the notification standard for that. I'll send you the citation for that tomorrow. I'd appreciate that just so I can feel more comfortable and maybe look to change the law so that I know that they're notified. Um, but I do respect that you had these community meetings and I really do appreciate that you did that. That's always the best way to go. And um, my only concern is that up off of North Quincy Street, we have this, this subdivision and you guys all know it and it's still in the development stage some 10 years in. And... Um, the drainage basins there are supposed to be managed by, is it the homeowner? Is it the association? Is it the person that's developing it? And it's not, doesn't seem to be as easy as um, it's portrayed. And so I'm just concerned with water. So in this area, there's just been a lot of development and this represents a lot of more pavement. And I understand that, you know, the road can be extended and 
I'm not I'm not opposed to this, but I, I am very concerned with the water issue in this whole area um, of the city. It's a lot of blasting that's going to go on. Um, there's all granite up there. I know everybody comes before these boards and they say, no, there isn't. But there always is. And there's always blasting. And so at what point are those concerns um, of the neighbors for this gigantic amount of construction that's going to be taking place taken into consideration um, in their quality, quality of life um, over the potential next 10 years. Because what we see in Brockton, with all respects to every single person presenting this evening, what we see in Brockton are developers that get easy permits and then they leave them open for years. And the neighbors that may have been um, very friendly at this initial meeting, become sick sometimes. We have an illegal transfer station with toxic material not too far from here that was supposed to be a sports complex. And I, I, I just really caution this board and every board of the city of Brockton to look around and see the devastation um, and the unfulfilled promises that these very pretty designs pretend because I have to deal with the residents when, like up on Quincy Street, there's a 20-year, 15-year-old project that's still um, construction debris in and out, hours of operation non-defined, um, people getting sick, roadway issues. So, I mean, um, I just want to tell the board, this seems like a very big project for a small space. And I caution you to use all of your powers to make sure that this isn't going to go the way of so many other projects that we're facing in the city right now to the detriment of the residents. Because you guys approve things, and then I have to deal with um, residents calling me that their kids are getting sick, that toxic um, materials are being brought onto the site, that they're worried about their children. And then I got to deal with city officials that tell me it's always been that way, it's fine. And then we find out from the DEP nine months in that it was never fine. So I just want to caution you all to be as careful as you can with other people's property values and other people's children's health, because we have a lot of um, development and with all respects to every single person on this development project, I have every faith that you have the best intentions, but it seems like time and time again, our boards are not strong enough for the developers um, that are coming to us with all respects to everybody at this, at this board. And so in my mind, that puts a responsibility, a heightened responsibility on the city's boards and the board members to really stand up and, you know, have some backbone and demand uh, protection for our residents. Because I have residents all over the city of Brockton calling me, feeling like their children are getting sick and that they've been having their property values diminished during a time that they're senior citizens and they wanna sell their property and maximize their own return. But because the boards are approving development that never gets finalized or is done in such a manner that it decreases their property values and they cannot sell their properties when they want to, when the market is high, which is literally depreciating their Hello. Their economic, um, you know, that they've invested in. Right, can you hear me? Yes. I'm, I'm just very, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm, I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical um, of, uh, of the backbone and the abilities of our boards to keep, um, keep a track on, on these developments. And I, I don't know if it's happening in other cities, but I'll tell you it's happening in Brockton, where I don't think our permitting of our city and our um, making sure that these projects are really tight um, is really respecting the residents that have to live around them. I mean, you just have to look up on Quincy Street. We have people's property values ruined for the last 10 years. They can't sell their house for the $500,000, $600,000 they should sell it for because they're living next to an open pit strip, strip mine um, that the city has allowed to be that way for 10 years. So what you're approving today, what you're moving on, I, I just caution you from now on, Brockton is a place where people want to move. We're not beggars. We need to we need to demand we need to demand proper 
development. Develop all you want, I don't care. But it has to be proper because I'm the one that has to deal with the phone calls and my whole office seems like it is um, a hotline for residents. That's what my office does. We answer calls from residents who have to deal with the ramifications of the permits that come through the city boards without protections for them. So I don't know what protections need to be put in here. I'm not an engineer. I am not an expert in development or planning. But what I'm telling you is I'm seeing the kickback at my office from people that say they're sick, their their property values, they can't sell them. So I'm asking you to be as strict as possible. And thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. We heard you loud and clear. Thank you for that. Um, if I do say so, we do have, you know, our city engineer that advises us and looks at these plans along with our city electrician, like all the contractors, the permits, we have to put trust into these folks that work for the city. So, you know, we're just not foolishly passing things, but thank you for um, your time tonight. Anybody else from the public, Rob? Oops, sorry. If there's anybody else from the public who would like to uh, make a comment, please um, use the raise your hand function. I see, uh, Deputy Chief Williams, you can just okay. speak, sir. You don't have to. I wanted to try it. I never did it before. Oh, so, um, Bill, uh, what is the total length of the cul-de-sac from? Uh, I believe from the end of. Eight hundred feet. It's, it's about six hundred feet. It's eight hundred, isn't it? But uh, that's all the way down to the. Uh... Oh yeah, four hundred starts at the end of Kent now, and then yeah, we go you know, on, on our profile sheet on sheet uh, sheet seven, uh, Deputy uh, Chief. Uh, you can see it's it's about four hundred feet, four hundred and fifty feet. Uh, what you see as included, we our profile shows are going up, up uh, somewhere is up a little bit, uh, just so we can show the drainage that's existing on Kent Street. So you can see right there where uh, the existing uh, improved Kent Street ends. It comes all the way down. Okay, so, so the, entire, there, four, the four, entire subdivision is about 800 feet, uh, not subdivision, but the entire street from where it starts to the end of the cul-de-sac? Yes, yeah, that's about that's about 350 feet from Bourne Street. And if you go all the way down the end, if you slide that back a little, Todd, you can see it's down here on our profile. It's down here at, uh, at, at it's, it's 800 feet. So okay. you got 350 down to, you know, that's 450 feet. But that's from the existing drainage up there. Okay, thank you. And uh, am I seeing this correctly that you took the water line from Kent, you're running it through the backyard at 262 Winter out to Winter Street, so you'll have a loop line? Yeah, that's that's correct. At, at, at the very end of Kent Street now, there is a hydrant. It's actually on, uh, it's on the, within the property that is actually 34. Uh, that'll be relocated, uh, you know, off from where it is now. It will be put back, you know, to match the profile in the, in the plan section, the uh, plan view. And then we have another hydrant down at the end of the cul-de-sac. From there, it'll go down the side yard of uh, number 262, and we'll be able to tie that into the existing water main on Winter Street, uh, giving you the, clo the, the closed loop. You're a good man. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so can you put that plan back up quickly, please, Mr. Self? It was Todd that's controlling it. Yeah, Todd. Oh, Todd, thank you. So um, where is the piece of property that the abutter is supposed to be purchasing on this plan? It's, 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 shown, it's shown in the very end. It's about 320, uh, uh, 3,200 square feet. Uh, the direct abutter, it's uh, Lars Witt's a realty trust. He, he's, uh, he's an owner. He's lived there for a long time. Uh, he's a, he, uh, he grew up down in that area. He, he had early in the process, process asked us, it would be possible for us to get some type of a, 
a small piece to be able to add to his rear yard to give him a little bit more luxury, you know, and, and privacy type of a thing. Uh, we know him through, through, you know, through other working projects and uh, the, the, the owner was, uh, of the project we're doing uh, was uh, more than happy to accommodate him. Okay. And the report I have says that this is going to improve drainage in the area for not only the area, but the neighbors. During your meetings with the neighbors, did you hear of any issues with water drainage or? Yeah, yeah. If, uh, if you looked at the plan right now, all, all the drainage from Kent Street all the way from <laughs> all the way down, which is about 300 feet, uh, it just it goes into two catch basins in, uh, at the bottom of Kent Street. And then it goes out through a drainage uh, and sewer easement that drains out in gravity feed out to Arcadia Circle. And one of the first things we did with in, when, we, when we started the project was uh, we did you know, request the DPW to come out, uh, which we always like to do, you know, working with the department. And we asked them if they could go out and take a look and, and make sure that some of the neighbors said once in a while you'd get clogging. Now, we weren't sure whether it was just because the, there was, you know, leaf mulch and things like that on the grates or the catch basins. But they actually went in, cleaned it all out and inspected it. Uh, we met them down there and, and everything seemed to be a good walk, working, working order. Uh, again, this uh, the water that we're using uh, I'll be, we'll be picking up on the new portion of the roadway. Uh, that'll be, lit, you know, there'll be, it'll be instead of going all the way across our property down towards Osley Circle uh, because of the, the, the actual uh, elevations uh, and the flow of the land, we'll actually be kind of intercepting that, putting it in our street drainage to be able to drop it into that same drainage area, but at a much lower rate. Uh, therefore, not increasing in any uh, <clears throat> any any drainage going in there, but it really take to us. There's you know we're, we're we're delaying or slowing down a lot of the water that goes there now to the adjacent properties. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Second. Roll call, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay. Thank you. It, thank, you. It, thank you, and to the welcome. board, thank you. It has um, ET Engineering arrived to go back to Falmouth Ave? They have, yes. Okay. Okay, ET Engineering, if you raise your hand so I can see you. It'd be a zoo and Andy. I promoted them already, but oh, okay, thank they're you. coming over. All right. Thank you, Azu. Okay. Well, good evening. Well, thank you, uh, Rob. I appreciate it. Thank you for indulging us, we were having a little bit of uh, technology issues. And uh, I have with me here, uh, Steve uh, Torrey. Uh, Steve is the owner of the property as well as the applicant. Um, Rob, am I able to share my file or? or uh, yes. You yes, you should be able to share your screen. Is Andy Sargent part of your presentation? Uh, he's about his son's sub, uh, indoor uh, basketball game. Ah, uh, okay. Because yeah. he, he's in the room, and I didn't know if you wanted him to prom promote oh, him. Oh, yeah. Up. Yeah. Uh, 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 allow him to uh, set in. I knew he was at his uh, son's game, so maybe he's uh, uh, participating from there. Okay, maybe he is. We'll see. Uh, and you should be able to share your screen now, sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no,
Savior. Estou cheirando o seu chesque. Chia. Que como se Windows. Nós vamos se mexer. Chrome tab. Que... It's not opening up. Okay, let me see if she... We're getting somewhere. As you've muted yourself. Okay, what was I showing? You, you're showing now. Is my screen showing? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Uh, but I can't even see. Okay. okay, so what we have of our uh, members of the board is of an existing existing of our property of our, we are calling it our zero farm of F. But it actually comprises of uh, three parcels that I owned uh, <clears throat> uh, by uh, uh, Mr. Tory through his uh, LLC. What we have is an existing, an existing uh, dwelling, uh, multifamily unit uh, at number. Um, at a, let's see here. Of, uh, 20 West Russell Street, and uh, uh, it uh, contains 16 units. That is uh, to the southerly portion of the property. And then to the northwest of the property, uh, uh, right up here, is an existing uh, two unit building at number 30, Falmouth Avenue. And then what we have here uh, to the northeast is the proposed three unit townhouse our uh, use at the um, at the uh, street side of the project is where we have the access uh, to the three units. What you're seeing here in this area here, uh, where I have my test pits, we do some test pits to uh, establish where the groundwater is, so that we could do the drain system. So right on the, in, the, in this area here, we have uh, an underground recharge system that takes care of the 100 year storm event. Uh, all the roof drains uh, will uh, come down the roof uh, downspouts and uh, into excuse this- me, Excuse me, As a, I don't see your cursor where you're pointing. Does anyone else? Or... You see it right now? Where some it's almost like I'm rotating it right here. I do not. I don't, I see, don't it see that either. Pardon me. Uh, could you make the uh, the document a little bit bigger and maybe okay maybe see your screen, your uh, cursor at that time? Okay, I see his finger. Yeah, I see your finger now. Okay, okay. And now it's okay. gone. Yeah, right here. Oh. Okay, there you oh, go. I see it. I see there it. There it is. Okay. So this right here at the, uh, what you see in blue. I'm sorry, it's gone saw. again, but okay. So the area in blue, if you could try to make this a little bigger. In okay. Okay. And maybe if you keep jiggling the cursor. Okay. Is, is, is the cursor up soon enough? Right here. 
You see the blue area where it says proposed 54 by 30? Yeah, see the blue area, okay. yes. Yes, okay. So those are the, uh, 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 and then I, I have dashed lines between them. So those are three units that we are proposing. Uh, right up here, uh, where you see the orange color, right, right over here, you see it? We see the orange. Okay, so those are, are uh, right under those, okay, is our recharge system. So the downspots are connected to it. <clears throat> and uh, the actual orange that you see is where we're directing, where we're directing the pavement runoff so that the pavement from the driveway actually goes into a surface uh, swale, okay? It's a grass area that is designed to uh, filter any uh, nitrous, any uh, runoff bond sediments, and it will filter that out and then drains or percolates into that recharge system. And then any overflow will then uh, uh, be piped over, uh, go over to, uh, to the street. But uh, we designed the recharge system underneath that uh, those orange areas. We designed that to recharge the hundred year storm event, and then, and then uh, well, we have uh, uh, water service. Uh, is the blue line? You can see that blue line on the street that says uh, it shows a blue line and it shows a W in between. That is the, the water main, and then uh, to the our uh, easterly side, northeasterly side of that uh, orange, a uh, cluster of the orange uh, that we're using for drainage, you see the line that's uh, a label that says C-2, C2 zone. And then to the left of that, it says R-3 zone. You will see the proposed three inch ductal iron water line that we're proposing to, prov uh, to provide water uh, to the site. Obviously, the Town sewer and uh, the city sewer is available. Uh, we have ample parking. We meet the uh, uh, parking requirement, on site parking, and um, uh, gas will be provided. Um, to give, uh, uh, Steve said, uh, reminds me that uh, it's not going to be gas, it's, it's all uh, heat pumps. Heat, heat pumps. Heat pumps. Okay, thank you. So uh, we went to a tech review. We had a, a tech review of uh, which was our city of our officials. And, um, and, and uh, I believe uh, they were, uh, we answered their questions and then they directed us to uh, uh, come to the board uh, for the board's uh, blessing. And so um, I think uh, that sums up uh, the project. Um, and uh, I will uh, entertain any questions or comments from the board. Okay, questions from the board? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Just, um, Azu, can you, is, do you have another sketch of like what any yard space looks like on there? Because it looks like a little tight for any kind of yard space at all. Okay. So, uh, thank you, uh, Larry. If you uh, look at uh, all the areas that we show as green, we have uh, all the green spaces actually highlighted right across the other property. Now, and if you go to the left, uh, I'm going over to the left here, you see this. Area. If you look at that, the uh, required green space is 35%. But not and, much behind uh, well, the, the building, right? Forty-one percent, and yeah, we uh, well, we have a total of thirty-six percent uh -huh. as required. Oh, okay, I see it now. All right, I'm seeing your I'm seeing your um yeah. your, your designation there. Okay, it's just your um. Yes, can you just lower that plan a little bit? Because we're from my view right now. I'm I'm I, I can okay. see okay. that. Okay, so I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. Yeah. And, and can you bring it down a little bit so I can see more of film that they have? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right okay, there. that's good. That's good. All right, so I see your area. So the 36.2 be from the back of the building to the existing building. Yes, sir. On West Rock. Okay. 
And that existing building on West Rossa, that's not a very old building at all either, correct? No, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, Jim. I think I think I'm all set. Okay. Um, public, Rob. Ladies and gentlemen of the public, if you have any questions or would like to offer comments, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you just hover over uh, the bottom, you'll have a menu pop up and we'll be able to see that. And Madam Chair, at this point, I do not have um, any questions. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Second. Okay, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Jim Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Happy uh, holidays. You too. All right. Moving on thank to uh, Arthur Estates. This is a definitive subdivision plan. We have Jacobs Drill Driscoll Engineering. You grab them. You grab yeah, they're them. coming over. Okay. Attorney Nasrallah, is there anybody else on your team? Yes, I believe uh, Jason Kennedy from Rockwood is here. Mr. Greg Driscoll and Ed Jacobs. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if Amanda or Langer is with us, but uh, basically the engineers and uh, uh, the applicant uh, developers on. Uh, as a, uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chairman, Mr. May, as a brief overview, uh, we received a, um, a staff report today from Evan, which uh, the engineers will address. Uh, we do not believe that that interrupts the plan. It's of uh, uh, minimal um, uh, consequence that can be addressed, uh, or if, if it has to be addressed, uh, uh, Greg Driscoll will speak to that. And we would. Um, also uh, be requesting a waiver of the roadway requirement. Uh, and uh, I think uh, hopefully you'll agree as well as Deputy Chief Williams that what we propose will create a better roadway with a better cul-de-sac for turnaround. It will uh, implement itself much better within that neighborhood than would currently exist. Uh, with that being <clears throat> said, I, I would ask uh, if Mr. Driscoll, or Mr. Jacobs would like to take it from this point. Sure, uh, I'll jump in. Um, so, Greg Driscoll of uh, JDE Civil, uh, re representing Rockwood Realty Trust. Uh, Jason Kennedy tonight here for the um, Barrow Saw Division project. Uh, so, what Rockland Realty Trust is uh, proposing to do is to extend, and actually, as I start to talk, I should probably share my screen. Thank you. Uh, right. Okay, um, so here's the plan. Okay, so what Rockwood uh, Realty Trust is proposing to do is to extend uh, the existing uh, dead end street that's Arthur Street um, to create a cul-de-sac and create frontage for two lots. Lot one stops right there and lot two, which goes all the way up to here. Um, <clears throat> and then remaining land of will just stay as uh, another an undeveloped parcel. Uh, so it's about 150 feet uh, to the uh, center of the cul-de-sac that's being added in, um, creating <coughs> lots. Uh, the site is comprised of currently comprised of three lots. Um, there's a lot here, this lot here, and then this larger lot here. Um, so Arthur Street currently dead ends um, right here with no turnaround, um, no means to turn around. Uh, the proposed cul-de-sac will be an improvement for the neighborhood um, by allowing um, fire trucks, delivery trucks, garbage trucks to have a place to turn around and, and head back out. Um, 
Let's see. So we are located in an R1C zone. Um, and the parcel is located off of Sa the Arthur Street is located off of Sawtell Avenue. So here's a larger map of the area. It's Sawtell Avenue, Arthur Street goes all the way down from Intervale. Ends right here. These are the parcels that we're uh, working with. Um, So we'll head back to the plan. So the grade of the um, of Arthur Street pretty much goes up all the way up to here. Um, so that way the, the high point right, right here will be the cul-de-sac. Everything will drain down down to the existing roadway along the existing gutter lines to the existing drainage system within Arthur Street. Um, we're proposing typical erosion controls, construction entrance here, um, stockpiling areas and everything outside of the conservation area. We've already been through conservation with this project uh, for the road extension and lot two um, per the order conditions with conservation. Uh, this house lot here already has a roof system designed for a roof infiltration. Um, and we'll be doing a soil testing at the time of construction for that uh, approval. And we'll be extending the water line where it ends in Arthur Street up to the cul de sac and adding another hydrant at the end. Um, you know, details and information on that is included in these plans. And we're also extending the sewer line up to the cul-de-sac and then new service lines out from there. Uh, this is the plan and profile of the project of the, uh, the road extension. So showing the existing um, sewer and water and gas line being extended up, up Arthur Street for the post subdivision. Um, we're showing the typical roadway sections and details, the construction of the road, I had connections, utility extensions, erosion control during construction, and information <laughs> from the um, conservation filing regarding um, wetland application areas. So, uh, is there anything I miss? Any guys from the team, Ed or Bill or Jason? So that's... So there's a, um, Greg, mm -hmm. there is a existing spring yes. uh, or well on the site. Could you uh, let the board know what you're doing to close that? Yep. It, so is a, it is a recorded water source at this point. Yeah, and that is uh, the paperwork to discontinue that is, um, has been started. Uh, it'll be filed with DEP. Uh, once we know the project's permanent and uh, that is subject to Mr. Kennedy purchasing the property from the seller. So this project is, uh, this property is under agreement subject to permits, which happens a lot with development. Um, so the seller is the, um, the owner of the uh, spring water company. Uh, this right here is the, the tank building and this building right here the building that has the um, the cistern for the mm -hmm. well. Uh, it's currently closed and capped off. Uh, so I might have saw that on the last page of the plan set. So this is the existing overflow from the, the spring. Uh, the spring has been there for hundreds of years, I'm sure. And it, um, it just flows out this way. This um, stainless steel structure over the spring has been placed there to prevent anybody from um, trying to drink the water from the spring. Um, this existing well house will remain uh, inside there. The cistern will be capped off and locked. Um, and as I said, uh, the paperwork and 
um, filing to decommission officially the uh, the water source uh, is pending. So it'll be done. And I'm sure that if the board were to approve this, the decommissioning of the well would be a condition of the approval. Yep, and we can provide the um, documentation showing that that's done as a condition as well. Rob, do you want to elaborate on the <clears throat> the um, the drainage requirements and the I guess there's a new board to deal with the stormwater ordinance. So under mass stormwater regulations, subdivisions of four or less units are exempt from the uh, stormwater regs. And in that case, in, in what we're talking about in the stormwater regs, we're talking about um, providing drainage for the roadway itself, not the individual properties. Um, the city has a new stormwater ordinance that is triggered whenever there is excavation. And so um, while the planning board has jurisdiction over the roadway layout and the utilities, um, the and, and has to deal with the exemption of the four, four housing units or less, uh, the, the stormwater ordinance is another board. And so um, if, if the board were, if the planning board were to approve this as it is tonight, and it's, that's if, then you would of course need to go to the uh, stormwater board to get a stormwater permit. And if the stormwater board made amendments uh, to the subdivision plans by adding more um, catch basins, you would just come back for an amended uh, subdivision to show the new catch basins in the, uh, uh, in the new road segment. So if the board were to pass this, it would, a condition would be to have the stormwater authority. They would need a stormwater permit from the stormwater authority. Yes. And if that stormwater authorities permit altered the topography or the added new utilities in the street extension, then the subdivision plan would have to be uh, amended to to show those new improvements because that's what gets filed uh, with the county uh, recorder. Okay, thankful for these experts to help us, guide us in these plans. Any other it's a, questions? It's a bit hairy at the moment, trying to figure out this. Um, who do we have on the panel? Uh, Any other questions from the board? Oh. I've got Eddie Jacobs has your hand up, why? Oh, there. Go ahead, Mr. Jacobs. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Mr. Jacobs? You're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself. Okay. Can you there hear me now? We can. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Um, and Greg touched on them a little bit, but Arthur Street right now from Sawtell Avenue to its terminus is 1,300 feet long. And so people that are coming up to the end of the street, even, you know, halfway up the street, um, especially delivery trucks, emergency vehicles have to back all the way down. And there's uh, vehicles parked a lot of times on the side of the road. So it's really dangerous. Um, by us requesting the waiver, for uh, extending a roadway that's already over the, the dead end length. It's actually a benefit to the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be uh, a safety issue. It'll, it'll relieve a safety issue by letting the uh, fire engines, emergency vehicles and delivery trucks, trash trucks um, to turn around in that cul-de-sac and come back down. As of right now, the city trash trucks have an agreement with the landowner to leave the gate open. There's a gate there right now at the terminus of Arthur Street. 
and he leaves the gate open right now so that the trash trucks can go up in the gravel area and turn around and go back down. Um, and another thing I wanted to touch on is the well is no longer active as far as um, producing water to sell. It's, um, it's been contaminated. Uh, and so that's why that silver stainless steel cover is on the overflow pipe is so that people won't be filling up the bottles like they used to do, uh, you know, because the, the water is um, contaminated. <clears throat> and that's why the well is being discontinued. And a couple of other things I just wanted to do um, to assuage the neighbors that, that we uh, brought that they brought up during the conservation meeting was Ridge Street will never be um, developed, constructed. Uh, those were some concerns that some neighbors had. And also some of the concerns were that um, Arthur Street would be uh, extended even further and not be a dead end and be some sort of cut through. That's not going to happen. Um, and I think I think that's about all I wanted to bring up. We are asking for a waiver for the extension of the dead end length, and we're asking for a waiver for a sidewalk all the way around the cul-de-sac on both sides, because currently there's only a sidewalk on Arthur Street on the south side of the street. So we are asking for that to be continued all the way up until it meets the walkway and driveway of lot two. So both houses would have access to the sidewalk and get onto the existing Arthur Street and down to Sawtell. And I believe that's all I wanted to add. Uh, could you tell us the size of those lots? What's the area for lot one and two? Yeah. And so what's the frontage for lot one and two? Yeah, I did want to bring that up, Rob, because this is one of the rare instances you'll have in front of you <laughs> recently that <laughs> yes. both of these lots are actually by right. So lot one is 32,735 square feet with 185 feet of frontage, a little over. And lot two is 53,250 square feet. So that's one, almost an acre and a quarter. And the frontage is 205.4 total frontage. And Thank Greg you, had mentioned the uh, well house was going to stay. And I just, you know, that if you look at this plan right here, it's that small uh, small square building that Greg's circling right there. That'll stay on lot two. And there's no reason why that lot wouldn't be able to use that well as a, an irrigation well if they wanted to. Could you just repeat the waivers that you are requesting? We're requesting a dead end length waiver from the 700 feet, because the road is already just north of 1300 uh, linear feet from Sawtell. And we're asking for a sidewalk on one side because there's only two houses on the street and would service those two houses adequately without wrapping it all the way around the cul-de-sac to end into, uh, into the woods. And the dead end um, length waiver is 700 to what? Well, it's a currently 1300 plus. Uh, to the terminus now, we're adding 150 feet to it. And as I mentioned, um, I think it's a benefit to the neighborhood to put a cul-de-sac there. So um, delivery vehicles, city vehicles, emergency vehicles will have a turnaround now and can drive back down the street in safety. Okay. And so I'm just not clear on the, the length again. You said 700, then you said 1300. No, nope. the, the, the maximum length of a dead end street in Brockton is 700 feet. So you, if you go over that, you have to ask for a waiver. So right now the street existing is 1300 millennial feet from Sawtell Avenue to the terminus. So we're adding another 150 feet to it, that's all. Okay, questions from the board? Madam Chair? Yes. This is Larry. Can can I just, can we, I'm not seeing on my screen the back end of lot two where I believe there's some conservation on that lot and it abuts with um, properties on, that were built a couple of years ago on North Cary Street. Yep, just that's where it's- To get a little bit more, which the back end of lot two is what I'm looking at. Yeah, see where it says Norwa formerly CLM development? Right. Right there. Those are those are the lots that were just developed. Right. Yep. Okay. So there's I see the one I see a one hundred 
foot buffer line there on the back mm-hmm. lot too. Yep. And what's running behind all that? What is that? Again, I'm not an engineer, so I'm looking at. In, in between the two green lines where Greg is moving his cursor right now, right. that's an intermittent stream. Okay. Um, and as we, as we said, we've gotten um, CONCOM approval. Right. And um, we're showing the 25 no, no, foot no touch. All of our work on lot two is outside the no touch. Because I have the obvious stupid question. When, the, when this well is declassified with mass DEP, why does the housing of it stay there? Is there a reason why? I mean, because if there's something that needs to be corrected or something over time, I'm just unclear why it actually stays there. Well, the, the tank and the pump house is coming down. Okay. That rectangular building, okay. that's, that's coming down. The well house, we had thought about that. Uh, the well house, so that has a cistern underneath it. And the water does, you know, through pressure come up and there's a two inch overflow pipe that runs across and down towards Ridge Street and out the head wall. Greg can show you. See it right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So from the well house, there's a two inch overflow that comes down to that head wall. And that's where that stainless picture, that stainless steel box was. So there's got to be overflow. There's always been overflow from the well. Right. Um, from the spring. Yeah. It's a natural spring. That's always from been the spring. There, so. Right. Okay. So we could have taken the well house down and the system would have cistern would have been there. We would have had to put a manhole on it and, you know, put a lock on it. So um, the developer decided to keep it because it's a really nice um, building. It's solid brick and it would be more, safe, I, I believe, to have that um, well house there with a lock on the door and the cistern inside of it. Okay. Eddie, you don't have an actual picture of the cistern, do you? Um, I don't think we have it on our plan. Because what the public should see, think about is that this is a, a hole in the ground. Well, no. With a cover over it. No, it's inside of that building right there. Right inside that building right. is a hole. Well, it's a it's a cement floor, and then there's a manhole cover with the cistern, um, you know, covering the covering the cistern. Yeah. yeah. So we have agreed with the conservation commission that 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 um, cistern cover will be um, improved and locked. Because right now it is just a plate, yeah. I'm all set for now. Thank you very much. Yep. Kim? Yeah, I think uh, you answered questions that I had. Okay. And... um, Madam Chair? I was just going to say with the cul-de-sac, Deputy Chief Williams. Thank you. A couple of questions. How, How big is the cistern? In gallons, or do you know that, Jason? Or is Ed Rose on? I can answer that. You meet her, Jason. Um, I don't know the gallons. Um, I think Ed Rose from Rocky Mountain Spring Water could speak to that. Um, we are not changing the gallon flow per day as it, when he shut this well down, um, it's been uh, overflowing the same amount since that time, which I believe was about a year ago. Um, and that's why he started the declassification uh, with the DEP, which is how they got the stainless steel cover on there. Um, the cistern that Ed's talking about is a roughly two and a half to three feet wide inside that brick building. And Yes, we did consider taking the building down, but it's actually a lot safer and it'll be better for a potential end user um, to have that building and maybe even use it as an irrigation well if they desire. Um, And it's also less impact um, within the 25 foot buffer area um, by keeping the building. Um, So that's one of the uh, agreements we came to with conservation. Okay, thank you. No, I was just wondering if it's a 500,000 gallon, you know, would give me an idea of how how large it was. He said it's 500 gallons. Okay, 500 gallons. Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
any way that we're, even though Ridge Street's not being um, built out, is there a way to bring a water line in and um, loop that water line on Arthur Street so that uh, we have a almost um, full uh, loop of the water system? Because it's kind of hard, you know, we're pumping water up into the, the up the hill and uh, the more water pressure we could have would be better if we could loop that in. Um, if, if I can speak to that, I know we can't go to the Bellevue side because we will not be able to cross um, the wetlands, you know, working with conservation. Uh, they were very clear about that. Um, so I, I know that, that that area would not be an option. And um, I don't know um, the options of connecting to, to Merton, but um, we weren't really intending to um, do any additional work outside of the yellow limit of work area. Um, so I'm not sure where um, we would potentially loop into a main. Okay. Um, my only thought process that, you know, um, you're looking for um, waivers, but if you could help the city out and help us loop the water line in and improve water pressure, that would, would have been nice. Um, the other thing is, uh, Madam Chairman, we uh, started this up in um, the west side of the city if we're going uh, beyond the 700 feet that we have for the uh, dead end streets in the city, even though this is 13 and they're only going another 150 feet, I would request the board consider um, re requiring the two house slots on off the street to be sprinkled with a residential sprinkler system like we're doing on the west side. Okay. <clears throat> That's a fucking joke. What kind of joke? You are not on mute. Uh, that was inappropriate. <clears throat> Two house lots um, sprinkled sprinkler system, the residential homes with sprinkler systems. And that's for, uh, for safety issues. Makes sense. <clears throat> okay. A any other questions from the board? Um, Deputy Williams, do, what about the fire hydrants? Are they a good distance considering the length of the road? And Yeah, so it looks like they're adding one more hydrant up at the end of the street, uh, right at the crest of the circle, and that'll be sufficient. It'd be nice if we could loop the water system in to give it more pressure, but... Um, I have that I have that noted uh, water line uh, to increase the pressure, correct? Yeah, but I'm not sure they, they're going to be able to do it. If they can't cross the... Uh, conservation area. Um, I'm not sure how they would get out to uh, to uh, Merton Street to do it. So I'd have to give that some more consideration. Is there any way to get to Bloom? Or Blossom, excuse me. Is there any water in the Blossom? I'm not sure. Yeah, my guess is if, if it is there, it would be very small anyways. Um, mm. But I'd have to check with the DPW in the morning. Uh, Deputy, um, first, I'm sorry about that outburst from somebody participating. Um, I understand your concern about a sprinkler system. However, not none of the homes on Arthur have a sprinkler system. We're also adding a hydrant directly next to where homes are going to be placed. Um, it just seems like, you know, we're, we're improving the fire truck access as it is. For a fire truck to come up here, I literally don't know how you would turn around besides backing out. So by being able to improve this cul-de-sac, I feel like we are helping um, the town out uh, quite a bit. And to what Ed Jacobs said earlier about trash removal and delivery trucks, also the crews at Snowplow ask the owner to leave the gate unlocked, um, which helps them obviously put store snow for one and then be able to turn around um, with, without having to, um, in a safe way. So um, I feel like we are helping um, the town by improving this to a cul-de-sac versus a dead end with a metal gate. I agree that cul-de-sac is a nice feature but the cul-de-sac allows you to get your two lots. So you're getting benefit out of it also. If you didn't put the cul-de-sac in, you wouldn't get your two lots. So I personally can tell you, I've done about a 14 point turn and turned a fire truck around at the top. And then I've also backed, 
a fire truck down that street um, in my younger years. So <laughs> it, it, it can be done. Um, but I, I definitely would stand fast on the two residential sprinkler systems. It's a standard we put into place after uh, a couple of subdivisions on the west side. And I think we have to remain um, standard as we go along in the future from this. Okay. All right, other questions from the board? If not, we'll open it to public. So uh, anyone from the public who has questions or would like to um, make comment, please use the raise your hand icon. Um, I see Councillor Lally and I'm going to unlock him first and ask him if he would like to speak now or bat cleanup. Um, you've got three or four other people who would like to ask questions. Well, if it's all right with you, I'll just I'll just go while you have me. Sure, let's go. Scholar and a gentleman, Mr. Director, I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to voice some of the concerns that not only I have with the project, but also um, you know neighbors of the project, constituents of mine have had. They've reached out to me about. Um, they are concerned about the water. Um, you know they have you know, water in their basements already, and they've noticed water increasing in their basements. Uh, this is something that's, you know, a hindrance to them that, uh, you know, is, is, you know, no fault of their own. This is increased since they've, you know, you know, came to the neighborhood. Um, one thing that I caught in the presentation was uh, that the capping of the spring will take place or would take place after the project is permitted, but the water is non-potable. Uh, if, if the water is non-potable, I don't know why, uh, you know, the process to cap it wouldn't happen already. We're, we're hearing that the, you know, capping of the well will not affect the water for the residents nearby and that it can be done by the uh, by the property owner, the developer, but that they also aren't going to do that until they have another alternative for the property, which I think is uh, something that I, I just you know it would seem it would seem like you know the thing to do would be you know if it is non potable to cap it either way unless there's something else to it, which is what I you know I would like to express a concern about. Um, several residents have reached out to me. Um, they're looking for, you know, uh, if this project does go forward, they're looking for a, a stipulation, uh, you know, with the, you know, consent or willingness from the developer, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, that there be some kind of buffer, uh, you know, a tree buffer for the neighbors who are already living there, you know, they have backed up to, you know, what they would, you know, feel is the woods for a while, and they don't want to have to lose that uh, if they can help it. Um, you know, the, the project, I, I just have, you know, concerns about, and I'm sure you'll hear some of the other concerns from the, uh, the abutters who live right on Ridge, uh, Arthur, Bellevue, and Merton, uh, who I'm sure the people lined up to talk after me. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, leave some of it for them. But there is a lot of concern and disruption. Uh, and I would like to, you know, take a brief moment to rest on the fact, you know, as far as the planning board is concerned, uh, the board's looking at how to improve Brockton, how to attract people to Brockton, and how to grow the city. Uh, and we're looking at uh, one of the, you know, one of the oldest uh, and most, I think, re not relatable, but, you know, I'm missing the right word for it, but historical sites in the Lithuanian village. A lot of folks who lived and grew up in the neighborhood and around the area can fondly recall parents and grandparents taking them up to get water, the way things used to be and, and how they'd walk around. Uh, I think that there is a historical uh, and sort of local cultural significance to the property that I would be hesitant to lose uh, as we, you know, continue to 
uh, you know, grow the city, we want to keep the village's culture. We want to keep that the village. Um, I would also just sort of express a little concern over the, uh, you know, derision with which the deputy chief was met uh, for his concern. The reason that a lot of the other properties on Arthur do not have residential sprinkler systems is because these residences were built before a sprinkler system was required. <clears throat> this kind of standard is present because there, you know, it's a public safety issue. It's a public safety concern. Houses and what they're built with nowadays can go up quite a lot quicker than, you know, than they used to. Uh, and we have mm -hmm. a fire department that is top notch that can get, you know, anywhere into this city as quick as they possibly can. But still, if we can provide the precaution, you know, if we can take the precaution, if we can, you know, do everything we need to make sure that the property and people within these houses are protected, uh, I think that would be a prudent move. Uh, so I would, you know, obviously trust the judgment of the members of the board and I appreciate their time, but I would ask that they uh, pay attention to the concerns of the constituents uh, and the residents nearby as they come up and that they, you know, uh, please keep all of our comments in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Other Thank you, Mr. Public... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to balance something right now. I do want to, we have a couple other questions. I'll get to them in just a second. We had one typed in. It said, if a fire truck can turn around, then why do we need to call the SAC? And it's like, uh, my answer that I typed in was that while a fire truck can turn around, uh, if you heard from Deputy Chief Williams, it's a multi-point turn to get it to do that. And it and it's not an optimal situation. Uh, sometimes, you know, emergency vehicles need to leave sites quickly to get to other sites. Uh, and it is a city requirement that we have a cul-de-sac uh, so that vehicles can turn around. It's just uh, a, a, an overall improvement for public safety. Um, I do wanna point out that at one time, um, Arthur and Bellevue and Banks and Albert and Lewis, they were all part of another subdivision. You can see these roads are all parallel with each other. And um, Ridge was intended to connect them all. Um, and Ridge never got built. And so if Ridge had been built, there would be no reason to create a cul-de-sac. You can see Ridge goes up through there and then you have another street north of that that connects all those. So they're not all dead ends. Unfortunately, at Arthur, the, the street never got, got built out. Um, and having a cul-de-sac would, would improve that area without opening it up to cross traffic or cut through traffic by continuing Ridge down to Merton, uh, which, which nobody really wants to see. So that was the answer, shorthand answer for that. Um, David Doyle? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you are. I can hear you now. Yeah, my name's David Doyle. I live at 56 Ridge Street, which also abuts that property where Merton Street is. Um, you know, they keep on saying they don't want to touch that end of Ridge Street along with Merton, but there's no conditions about that in any writing along with tree removal that lines those two streets. Uh, my other concerns is water in the basements. We all get water in the basements up on that end of Ridge Street. Um, at one time, there was an old geological map of the city of Brockton. The house across the street on either side showed underground springs. When it rained really hard, water would come into our basements, anything usually over three inches. Um, and if you guys remember when we had a storm probably about 10 years ago, uh, where it was like several inches of rain in a couple of days, the city flooded out. My sub pumps couldn't even come, come close keeping up with that water. And it was all clean water um, from underground springs. The other concerns that I have is green space. We're losing green space in the city. That green space up there also provides shelter for animals. We see deer, we see turkey. 
you know, an occasional coyote and whatever else that lives in there. Um, I'm, we've tried to stop this before, uh, probably a, probably about eight, 10 years ago when Gallagher was on the commission. Um, he was totally against it. And also, you know, back in July, you guys voted this down for this. Um, you know, this is ridiculous what the city, what the people of Ridge, Merton, and Arthur Street have to go through every three, four years because the developer wants to go in there. Um, it keeps on getting voted down. I hope you guys vote this down um, for the reasons that I stated. And the other, one other quick note is that is all legend there. Um, the house that was in probably put in probably about a dozen years ago on 90 Merton Street, they had a blast of roadway to get the utilities in. And the guy across the street, which was on the corner of Merton, Edgar, he never got water in his basement before until they blasted that. And also the pool next door to me at 60 Ridge Street, uh, when I moved back in there in 85, they had a blast for that pool. Um, you know, we're just kind of fed up with this whole thing. People move into that street, you know, families, because it is a quiet, dead-end street. I just don't want to see any chance of Ridge or Merton open along with the tree removals of that street. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Um, would one of the applicants' representatives, um, is, is Ridge a public or private way? Do we know? Uh, plan? It's public. I believe it's public. Oh, an extracted private, is that correct, Ed? Mr. That is correct. That is correct. Private. Through the chair, the paved parts of the street are public. The paper street, all paper streets are private right. until they would be paved and taken by the city. That's correct. And that portion of Ridge Street that's north of the wetlands going to Bellevue, that's not even wide enough to put a public street in there. It's 20 feet wide. Um, how do we go about getting a private street vacated? Do the property owners have to do that? The adjacent property owners? That is correct. Of which you may be one. Right. Um, we're, we're on the east side. Yeah. Technically, the, um, the current owner owns to the center line of Ridge Street. Correct. So we'd have to get together uh, with these abutters to to do an abandonment. Mm -hmm. Phil, you're muted. I don't know if you're trying to. No, I'm. I'm thinking out loud. Um, maybe it is part of our discussions as to getting that section of Ridge Street abandoned uh, by the owners, so that we don't have any future thought of construction and that might help um, alleviate Mr. Uh, Doyle's some of Mr. Doyle's concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Douglas Wedge, I am unlocking you. Am I unlocked? You are unlocked. That's good. I need to be locked up. Anyway, um, <laughs> a couple statements were covered by uh, one of my neighbors, also uh, the city councilor and state rep. So I'll continue on some of the other points. Uh, number one, your, your previous presenters on other projects had meetings with the residents. We've had nothing, no input, no asking our opinion, no telling us what's going on with the proposed builders. Uh, we would think that would be nice if they had taken some of our concerns in before we've come to this. Uh, there were 35 members of our neighborhood that were at the ZBA and they voted it down. They voted down the two unconforming or non-conforming lots. And there's no doubt in my mind is once we open the key to the door that they will be back in front of zoning and saying, now we have a cul-de-sac there grant us the right to build on these 
unconforming lots. My big concern, I am a direct abutter to the woods. Since this cistern well spring, it's been referred by many of these things, has been talked about, I uh, that they have not taken water out of it. I get water in my garage now with just a minimal rain. When we had that 100 year rain, I had water coming up through my French drain. I never had in my entire life. I am a lifelong resident of Brockton. Um, and you can listen back to previous meeting at the Conservation Commission when the owner of the well got pushback on building, he said, okay, fine, I'll build a preschool there. So they have no respect for the residents as you heard the statement that somebody said about the sprinkler. These people have no respect. The proposed builder keeps calling it a town. It's a city. They don't know because they don't live here. They don't care because they're going to build and they're going to move on. We do not need another project. If you go up Cary Hill, you can see all those houses where all the woods were taken down and the animals are now in the woods next to us. And I'm glad they're there. When they built the school on North Quincy Street, all those animals came over to our woods and they live there. And we're fine with that. Little bunny rabbits, all kinds of deer that eat my bushes and they're welcome to them. But the other concern is if I'm getting water now with them not using the water, what's to say when they start blasting, because we all know it's ledge up there, that it doesn't change the water table. And with climate change, and you can debate how climate change is happening, but it is definitely happening. We're going to have more water events and rain events and snow events and severe weather events that are going to affect my property, my neighbor's properties. This is a bad idea, a bad fit for Brockton. We used to be known as the Tree City. We're no longer known as that because of all the buildings that they allow stuffing them in, in between houses. It amazes me how many houses are stuffed in between other houses. This is a project when the man bought the property, he knew he was buying a well. He wasn't buying a place to build houses. So he got his money and his tax breaks for having well, a well up there or a spring. And now, for whatever his reason is, he says it's not drinkable water. I'd like an independent test to see if the water is potable. I don't think it's a good idea. It's definitely not a right fit. And it will guarantee it will change the water table. And they've not spoken to the residents, not taken our concerns in. Only in these meetings have you heard our concerns. And they've offered no mitigation fund if they were allowed to build this, that if we got water and flooding, they are lessening the value of the properties around here if this project goes forward. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you working on these boards. I know how difficult they can be. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, hang on just a second. And Sean Lusk, uh, I'm going to allow, open your microphone. Sean, you should be able to speak now. Hi, um, this is actually Alexandra Strangis. Um, I have Sean with me. Um, we are at 57 Ridge Street. We received a letter to attend as we're within 300 feet of the proposed estates. Um, we also have concerns regarding how the buildings would impact our existing home. Uh, to reiterate, we are getting increased water in our basement during heavy rain and destroying this green space may further disrupt the water table. We are also concerned about excavation that could directly impact our home as well. Um, Everything else has already been said, so I apologize for reiterating, but thank you so much. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. And is there anyone else who would like to speak on this topic? Uh, 
have Ms. Lasso. Hang on just a second. Liz here uh, should be unlocked. Liz Lasso? Does it work this time? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Hi there. Hi, Rob. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's well. Um, I am uh, a resident on 99 Armisen Street, which um, is directly behind the, um, the Parkview and the Heritage Court development that was mentioned earlier uh, during another one of the hearings from uh, our rep, Michelle Dubois. And I have been living a really living hell over in my part of this uh, neighborhood in the city because there has been no, absolutely no jurisdiction or uh, help with the developers, developers, I will say, because we've had three of them now dealing with the city. We also had wetlands over here. We have problems with them not adhering to the zoning rules. We have problems with them not adhering to the uh, site build site conditions because there's just not enough power in your office, Mr. May, in the city to actually hold the developers accountable to what they're doing. And that is not your fault, Rob. You do an awesome job and so doesn't your team. There's just not enough of you to enforce the things that are supposed to happen and go on in the city. So that's one of my major concerns. I don't want to put other Brockton citizens through this same kind of uh -huh. like hell that I've been living through. And you know what? I, I just have to say this. It would have been nice if Jack Lally would have attended one of our meetings over the years to get things done right over at the Heritage Court and over at the Parkview Lane um, in, in, in that development. But we've never had any help from him whatsoever. So him attending this meeting tonight, I, I wonder what his ulterior motive is for attending this meeting, because if he's really interested in helping the citizens, uh, that's enough. I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't want you disrespecting. I'm just. I'm not disrespecting. I'm just stating the facts. Okay. okay. So my my Thank biggest you. concern is Thank you. my biggest concern is is that another development is going to be allowed to be developed in the city, and that it's just going to run amok and run awry. And it, it, instead of looking out for the citizens who are already living here and already paying taxes and who already are going through serious like water issues, I'm going through water issues. My basement has been flooded three times since this has all gone down in my neighborhood and no one's done a thing about it. So that's my major concern. I'm here to speak up on behalf of the other mm -hmm. people to prevent okay. them from going through the same thing that I've had to go through over the years. Thank, thank you. We heard your concerns and your frustration and we appreciate your time tonight. We did hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, are there anybody else would like to speak on this issue? Councilor Lally, you have your hand up. Um, let me see if there's anybody else that wants to speak first. And please go ahead and unmute yourself. You should be able to speak. Thank you, Mr. Director. I wanted uh, to offer a point of clarification. Um, all planning, zoning, and uh, other meetings, not all, but but all the, you know, the ones that happened where, you know, policy was made, decisions were made, uh, and the project to deal with Woodland Park uh, were initiated happened prior to my time on the council. Um, and as for the ones that happened afterward, which were mostly clarifications and updates from the developers, I have been at those meetings. Um, I've also attended the HOA meetings that the Woodland Park development has held. Um, I know that uh, you know, you can't please everybody. Some folks are always going to be frustrated, but I would like to use this time to clarify uh, between uh, facts and ravings. And I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, I do have, and I, I, I see Ms. Lasso wants to um, uh, speak again, but I, I'm hoping that we can avoid a point counterpoint um, and I'll leave that up to the chair. One 
uh, we have a couple of, of uh, Q&A questions. And um, uh, someone wants to know about, will there be any blasting or do you anticipate any blasting? Um, and I'm hoping that somebody from the applicant's team can address that. Um, Rob, I could address that. We um, are not anticipating blasting. Um, it's definitely possible. And I, um, I've heard all the residents' concerns, um, which throughout this process, especially with conservation, we've tried to address different drainage things, um, specific items, and we've talked about the well. Um, and we worked very closely with conservation to try and appease some of these concerns. Um, we're adding two lots on um, two oversized lots with um, excess frontage, excess area. Um, I know um, Brockton is short on housing. It's going to help that. I don't see how this is a detriment to the neighborhood. Is There is no way that it will not increase the value of the neighborhood by just adding the cul-de-sac plus the two lots. Um, so I just felt like I wanted to um, say that as well. Um, I know um, that other projects have been proposed, um, but we're just focused on trying to um, improve this area and we're not putting a daycare as um, someone had mentioned. Um, we're proposing to extend a cul-de-sac and add two single family homes um, that, like I said, would improve this area. Thank you. Um, Rob, is Megan still on or did she sign off? No, she has signed off. Okay, because I see that conservation addressed the water issues or the, the, the wetland and the well um, and didn't find there'd be any additional water issues. Um, let me let me jump in a little bit on that. What they did was uh, and 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 I I want to be sure that I'm not saying this incorrectly, but that there'll be there will be no negative impact on the wetlands. I don't know if they dealt with the houses and the basements. Correct. Okay. Um, so I just think that, that doesn't. That's, that's not a, their purview. That okay. Um, but what about the wildlife? Uh, can I address that as well? I just um, want to hit, can uh, Rob just first answer that they, shouldn't they be involved with the conservation as far as the wildlife in this area? Um, if it was a conservation land, you know, city owned conservation land, there'd be much more involvement right now, unless there are some uh, uh, endangered species. Uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot we can do um from the city's perspective on wildlife okay so there was no water study done as far as the tables and uh, i understand right point on conservation this isn't uh endangered species but i still feel like there's still more work to be done um attorney nasrella has um who is part of the uh, presentation team would like to uh, say something. You're on so, mute. Fine. You have to unmute yourself, Attorney Nazarella. Phil, you need to unmute. Okay. Um, usually they like lawyers muted, but uh, I appreciate it <laughs> being unmuted. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, uh, Mr. May. I, I've been listening uh, to all of the comments with great sensitivity to the neighbors, with great uh, apathy and um, uh, feeling for obviously my client, the developer, who is a very reputable developer. And I've found in my experiences, sometimes unfounded speculations and concerns leads to a hysteria that is, is somewhat unfair. Now, the, the initial, uh, and I'm gonna recap real quickly so I don't you know, over uh, belabor anything, uh, there was concern, well, about the capping of the well. Clearly, a developer cannot cap anything or do anything till he makes the final purchase of the property, which would be naturally after they have been uh, the permits have been granted to him. Uh, there were concerns about tree buffers, which I have not seen in any other development project I've been involved in that you were required to keep trees up. The individual 
or entity that owns this property has a right under the law to cut down every tree if he wanted to. That's not what this individual wants to do. He wants to make a very aesthetic, pleasingly uh, uh, properties, which he has by right to put there, two properties. So whether how he constructs the trees or doesn't construct it, leaves the trees is up to him, but he's going to do it in a manner as aesthetically pleased, pleasing as he can, because obviously he wants to sell those to the right people. And when you're talking about lots that are well oversized, uh, that is part of what aesthetics means. And the, the, the division of uh, uh, or derision uh, caused is an outpour of uh, some frustration by one of the listeners, while inappropriate, uh, it should not have a place in these proceedings, no more than should political uh, or popularity issues. We are here to abide by the law. And when I hear from some of the residents, well, they weren't approached. There were 35 members at the zoning board from the neighborhood that heard what was going on. They heard from the Conservation Commission and they are hearing from the planning board. There are no surprises here. Uh, no one's trying to uh, blindfold what the processes were going through. The extension of the road is for the benefit of that whole area in the turnaround. And probably all of us in our younger days could back up a truck, but we don't know what delivery trucks, what, what commercial trucks are going down the street. I don't think that's even an issue anymore. Uh, the fact that we are uh, closing a well, there is no evidence, scientific evidence, that any of the water problems that these neighbors may face or have incurred has any relationship to do with that particular well that's being capped off. And that well could be capped off with or without a development. So all I request of the board is to confine the issues within the purview of the planning board rules and regulations, which we try to do. And yes, I'm a great lover of animals, had a German Shepherd for 13 years, but quite frankly, the, the, the lifestyle and habitat of the animals is not to be within the purview of this board or any other board within the city. Those are all nice things to talk about, that this is a project where the developer has put down a lot of money, time and expense, dealing with interest, rising interest rates, purchase and sale agreements, a lot of things in the balance. And for us to bring in things which are far and apart from within the purview of the law is unfair. And I think if, the, if we abide by what the rules and regulations are, these developers will create the property the neighbors will be happy with, will not incur any problems, uh, and, and certainly not caused by these individuals here. And I think we have met uh, all of the conditions, both engineering-wise, aesthetic-wise, and building-wise, that the city and its boards would like to see from us. And I would like to move forward beyond that and put aside politics and popularity. Zoning and planning is not a matter of popularity. It's a matter of abiding by the rules and regulations of the law. My only final statement is, and with great respect to my friend, Deputy Chief Williams, I am unsure myself so I, I, as to whether or not it's a regulation of imposing a sprinkler system in a, in a single family residential home because it's of a large expense. And I really think we have to weigh whether or not it's something that should be required if it's not regulated under a local ordinance in, in imposed by, by law to do that. Other than that, I would ask the board to look at this favorably and allow us to move forward. Thank you. Um, Mr. May, I, and I agree with a lot of what you said, Attorney Nazarella, and, and if your developer really wants to keep these houses aesthetically pleasing to sell, I think that he could take into consideration the tree buffers that the neighbors are asking. Why not? Let's keep it a friendly neighborhood. I believe he will, I, because okay. we want to be good neighbors, and I believe he will. I was just making a point. We're being asked a lot of things that don't yeah. exist within the law, but we will do that. Um, so also, also, um, I just made me lose my train of thought. I was going to ask, could a condition or something be written into the deed that there was a concern from one of the neighbors that, okay, if these three houses are built, that they will two then build two. Okay, they will build extra ones because it's now a cul-de-sac. Can something be written into the deed or condition so to prevent that? Is that something uh, allowable, I guess is my question. It actually wouldn't be possible based on the layout of the land. There's no other 
land available to create more lots. This lot right here goes right up to Bridge Street right here and has frontage all the way around to here. And this lot has frontage all the way over here to, to Bridge Street. Greg, do, Greg so. do you have a a uh, a drawing that, that doesn't have those lines on it that just has the property lines? Um, yeah, Greg, the existing, uh, existing condition should have it, right? There you no, go. Uh, it's the. Uh, I was just looking for the lot lines of the subdivision. Oh, yeah, the yeah, lot without, the, sheet. without the um, conservation colors on it. Correct, correct. It'd be easier to read. Uh, but but uh, lots one and two completely encompass the um, cul -de -sac. proposed cul-de-sac frontage. Is correct, and there is there is no other frontage for somebody to build off of that cul-de-sac. That is correct. Okay, well, so the concerns that I'm hearing from the neighbors, which I feel for them, I mean, I lived on a road on the other side of the city and got tons of water in my basement. So um, that's our last, the only concern that hasn't really been addressed and we should all be concerned with this, the table, the water tables. How is How are these additional houses going to affect the neighbors and their basements? and they're flooding. We don't have any study or information on that, do we, Rob? I do not have any of that, any, any information to that effect. I do think that that is something needed. Greg, you can speak uh, to that. Yeah, Greg, you might want to help us out. I, there's no way to, to for, foresee changing the water table. You have the um, intermittent stream where the water naturally flows. That's where the water is going to continue to flow when we do these homes. If we wanted to on lot one, we could consider doing a raised ranch home that has less impact on digging the ground. Um, and to what you had mentioned about the trees, I assume that the residents went to the town hall and looked at these plans, which is why we have to submit them so far in advance. We can't take any trees down um, uh, within the 25 foot buffer. We can't take any trees down on Ridge Street. And um, in the conservation meetings on lot two, it showed our limit of work on the back of the house as well. Um, so I agree, yeah, we, we will not be taking, um, we will be leaving a buffer, uh, but those items have been addressed in conservation. We were at two meetings to go over these items. Um, so I feel like that's- And, and in, in general, the, the way the water flows into the, into the road and gets well picked up within the road and directed to these catch basins in here, we'll, we'll take water surface flow away from these areas. Yeah, and there's already asphalt in that cul-de-sac area um, that the water is going not where it would be intended to. At least we would be controlling it. Sorry, I'm pointing at my screen. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. That would, we, we, are, we are really improving and controlling the water more than it is now. Yeah. Right, and we we are proposing infiltration systems to the roofs, so the driveways will flow into the road. The road is going to take it to the catch basins, and the the roof drains are going to take it into the infiltration systems. I can show one of the plans from conservation, even though it's not for this board, but uh, this is what was before conservation. Oh, the regards water, to lot two, right? The the water table is in, in regards to the planning board. Is is this is this in the planning board purview? Um, I, I, no mean, I mean, I, I don't understand. Like we went through this with conservation, and I thought that was addressed. Um, well, we do have to take into consideration that of the the what current water issues, and I don't see enough evidence that we're not going to add to the existing issue. Um, Someone did bring up a good point. When you start blasting in this area, what is going to happen to the water in that well? That's if we blast. We don't know that that's what, what is going to be required in this particular area. That's an assumption. Um, and I, I, I can't not speculate on something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't that, think the that's just that. the, the unknown is what's scaring um, the neighbors. And I, I, I feel for them and I feel for the developer. I understand, you know, it's his property he wants to build, but he also needs to, we all need to take into consideration the fears of the neighbors, their concerns living there. Okay. Well, so I, I think that um, a 
we should okay. maybe consider continuing this with some Madam Chair. Updates. Yes, Rob. Um, Representative Dubois would like to add some more. Um, All right, I'll let me finish and then she can speak. Okay. Um, I, I'm thinking, I'm feeling strong and like this needs to be continued. Do a little more studying on this. Um, confirm whether you're going to be blasting or not. You talked about raised ranches. If that will help or, or as and part of a study, validate or verify that there won't be additional water damage to the neighbors. Um, if you come back with some a stronger plan to make not only the neighbors, but me more comfortable with this, because I do, I am a resident in Brockton. And I would not want to deal with this either. Um, what, what type of study would that be? Well, we've had- I'm not aware of any water table study or a ledge study or something of that nature. I'm, I'm really throwing off. We, I feel like we've uh, presented something that is going to improve this neighborhood. I know Ms. Dubois is gonna come on and use this as a political forum, um, but we oh. if, look, the, the proposal that you guys just approved, the preliminary had so many more lots in such a small area and those lots aren't even conforming. We have oversized lots and we're improving a dead end that has a gate on it. How can this not be uh, a benefit to the town? You know, it's, I've never been to an approval process where the fire chief wants to back up to a 13 point turn for a fire truck. We're making it so they can turn around. This, I, I feel like we, um, I'm, I'm not sure what additional study you would, would I don't even know what legal study that there would be for something like that. Ed, Greg, Phil, I mean, I've never heard of that. Well, you added your input uh, or offering maybe raised ranches in you being yes. the expert saying that that would prevent the water tables from going up. So I feel like you know what to do to improve this plan to help the neighbors feel better and maybe improve the drainage. If, if I can also, just, if I can just interject, the water table isn't going to come up. I don't know like where you're getting that. Top of the hill. If you think about if you think about what we're doing, right? We're adding a cul-de-sac. The waters are contained in the side of that pavement, inside of that sidewalk, the curbing. That is all going down into the catch basins. The catch basins are going to grab that water, bring it all the way down into Intervale Street and out into the trout stream. None of that is ever going to see, none of the neighbors are, are ever going to see that. The houses are going to be built. They're going to have infiltration systems, which Greg was just about to show you before we get off on this tangent. But the water is going to be contained and there'll be what we call net zero increase. It is up to us to prove that there'll be no more water going off the site than there is now. That's what our job is. And good, that's what will happen. Good. And we're making progress, gentlemen. We're making progress. We got the trees, the buffers addressed. We we have the issue of no additional homes on that on that cul-de-sac since it's being developed. And, and no additional water. That's what I'm trying to get at. There's not going to be any additional water. But you seem to be glossing over that. Greg, bring up the conservation plan. Please. Maybe it's because I lived through it. So I understand, you know. Well, everybody's lived through development, right? I mean, you, what you're doing is you're trying to stop this development. And I'm I don't not trying to stop. I'm trying well, to make it work. Well, we are trying to make it work. And the, it, and the community and the city of Brockton. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm not making sides here. I'm trying to make it work. I know, but I'm, I'm explaining to you that there will be no water coming onto the, onto the property that isn't there already now. Behind this house that Greg is showing, there's an infiltration system. Okay? That is going to handle all the roof runoff. The driveway is pitched to go into the road. And as I said before, the road will be channeled into the catch basins and all the way down Interville Street into down to down Arthur Street into Intervale Street. There's swales behind the house because it's higher in the back where we mentioned where Macy had built those houses. Those swales are gonna take the water on either side of the house. On the left side of the house, it's gonna go out into the street. On the right side of the house, it's gonna go into the wetlands where it's always gone. That is what we're doing is that's how we're taking care of the water issue. There's not gonna be any rise in the water table from building one house. And if the, the board requires a, uh, a roof, conservation required this roof drain system for this house right here because it's within the buffer. If the board wants to condition a roof drain system, which we're kind of expecting anyways for this house, yeah. we can do that as well. 
Um, great, great the driveway and everything to go into. Now we're talking. Cul de sac. And I believe there's like a broken city drainage pipe or something that needs to be addressed. That would be helpful if it was fixed. A storm drain that's broken. That's down on that's down on Merton Street. I'm not aware of that. I thought there was a drain at Ridge. That's a city issue that the city should probably address. City's got to take care of that. Okay. Down here? No, I think it's or it's in, it's the, in wetland. the wetland itself. Okay. Oh. Yeah, there is a pipe there. I see it. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So if we do consider um, consider this an improved draining system as a condition, mm -hmm. this uh, broken storm drain be fixed. Uh, I, we we can't agree to do that. That's a town um, item, and that would require conservation approval. That's not within. Uh, so yeah, it's within Bridge so, Street right here. Right. This so this right. Conservation right. approval first for the to repair the broken storm drain. Hang on, just, just to help Tony. with the concerns just, of the wet water tables. Just, just quick question um, for the engineering team. We know that, and, and and you have marked a drain, and it's a little teeny tiny drain. Um, where does it go, and where does it start? On in in the ridge right away. Do you know? No. All we found, all we found, Rob, was an exposed pipe that it looked like it, you know, it just went away over the top. So the top of the pipe is exposed. So it's not broken or blocked or anything that you know of. Not that I know of. We couldn't get access inside it. We don't know where it's coming from, and we don't know where it's going. Oh, I had heard from the conservation agent that it was broken. It may be, not, but I'm not aware of it. We were never yeah. informed of that in the multiple meetings we went through with conservation. Um, but to um, Madam oh, Chair. Hold on, hold on a second. Um, Greg, go to the right of the head wall. Up here? Yeah, zoom in where it said, no, go to the left. Right between the well house and the head wall, please. Yeah, now zoom, go to the left. Okay, this is what Megan's talking about, Rob. See the 12 inch CMP ends and then the eight inch ADS starts and goes to the head wall. Oh, this? There is a break right there. I found it in the field. There was a boot that um, was a transition piece that went from the 12 inch RCP to the eight inch ADS. And that boot, you know, I don't know what happened. Some, you know, maybe a tree fell on it or maybe just. Uh, expansion contraction from summer to winter it popped off so that would have to be replaced at some point okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure now that that's what megan is talking about yeah so that that then goes to the head wall yes and looks like it terminates it doesn't go anywhere after that no it if you look at that picture of the head well let me back up greg yeah zoom or, out. Or, so or go to the right. it... yeah go to the right you see where it says 12 inch cmp yeah. there's another head wall so yeah. the water was coming down that way, and we've already mentioned that the uh, well house, that square building. Right. So the current owner was getting water coming <clears throat> towards the well house, and he was afraid of contamination on the well. So he put that head well in, and he put that drainage pipe to bypass the well building. And he had to come out into that head well down there oh. to take care of the surface water running. So there was, you know, the development up towards the north and the east. Um, he was just concerned that, um, you know, the water okay. would get into the into the cistern. So he put that in himself. So it's not the water uh, or, or the drain in uh, Ridge. No, it's no, this, it's this other one. Yeah. Okay. It's, thank you. It's, it's separated by a foot. That that'll be, you know, something that we should fix. Yes. Ed, is that something that you need a machine to repair? Or is it can, no? Can, okay, yes, and it would yeah, it would be very simple. So, the guy with a shovel and some, yeah, a piece of ADS. With the approval of Megan, um, uh, the conservation agent, I would agree to um, repair that. Um, in addition, uh, like you were saying before, Greg, for lot two, I would also agree to do some uh, roof and infiltration drains as well. But lot one, lot one. I'm sorry, we already agreed to do on lot two. Mm -hmm. And we can grade the site 
you know, same as the other one was shown to, to direct water. You know, right now water flows this way right across the land and we can we can grade it kind of like this to have swales coming along the side of the house on each side to direct it into the cul-de-sac along the uh you know go along the gutters and into the drains and out to bypass you know create kind of a um, um a dike a dam to block water coming across this way what condition is the curb line and gutter on arthur street up to those um, catch basins. Uh, oops. We have a granite curve on the south side, and we have a uh, edge of pavement on the north side with a raised, like, um, it's kind of a berm along here. Yeah, there's kind of a berm along that edge, keeps the water on the street. And so this new. Okay, because the contours cycle. don't really show that. Yeah, this this uh, existing contours kind of just yeah, and we're going to extend the um, the curb all the way up to like this point right here for the new the new road. So from this property line out is like the new right right. That's, yeah, you know, and then from here this edge of pavement to here is what has to be constructed as well. So we're going to extend that vertical granite curb. Oh, can we all agree that there's more work to be done to this plan and we should continue it? I, I think we show what we what we we're hearing um, improve the drainage, go to conservation first to fix the broken drain. Uh, Madam oh, Chair. Infiltration drains to uh, what is it? The first. I think these will be conditions of approval and, you know, for approval of a definitive subdivision, we don't need we don't need to show full build out and what we're going to put on each one of these lots, but you can condition it. So when we do design these lots and these houses that we'll, we'll put in the proof infiltration systems, we'll put in the swales, we'll direct everything into the road. But as far as more work to be done, I don't know what else more I would show on the plan currently. In terms and Madam, of this and now we had the sprinklers to the two and Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about both um, stormwater and sheet flow and groundwater. And obviously those are two different systems, but they are interacted with each other um, at some point. And I don't know how to address that. Okay, who, who does? Um, obviously, Chike is going to want to, uh, is required to issue a stormwater permit for these properties. Any site that there's going to be excavation on uh, requires a stormwater permit, but we don't have anything related to groundwater that I am aware of as a municipality. Now, we're not adding, this project doesn't add to the groundwater because it's, it's, directing the flow to uh, existing catch basins. Uh, there may be a question of whether, because they're not pulling water out of the ground now um, for drinking water, that that is causing the water table to, to rise. But uh, what you have right now is that when the cistern full fills, um, and that's an, an action of the ground water, uh, ground table filling it in, um, there is an overflow pipe that removes that water. So it, it's, I don't wanna say it's a closed system, but when the cistern fills, it fills to its natural level of the rest of the water table. It doesn't go higher than the water table. Um, which is why there's the overflow pipe on it. So mm -hmm. it would probably come up a little bit higher than that, but I don't know what that ground level is. Um, it's probably just right oh. underneath the surface. Um, Eddie, I think this is your area mm -hmm. to address Rob's question. It's a good one. When the stormwater and groundwater interact, what 
do you normally do in a situation like that? What what's what's the plan? I guess for lack of better. Well, I I think what we've shown is how we're going to handle the water. The only additional impervious area that we're adding is that's not going to be taken away down Arthur Street is the roof, right? And the only thing we can do with the roof is to put in an infiltration system, which we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know how else to answer that unless we run roof drains out into the street, <laughs> you know, and then it would really take everything away. If you want to put a French drain around the building and run it out into the street. And we're going to tie that into the, the drains or. Yeah. I mean, that, I think that would be an issue. Yeah, that, and, that and might that, be a solution. Would, well, that would be a violation of the stormwater ordinance. Yeah, so. You have to retain that water on, on site. And which then that's um, what we're doing. And that's what the infiltration systems are for. Mm -hmm. So there's no, you know, there's a, when it rains, the water comes down onto that site and it gradually makes its way. If you look at the contours, it makes its way from the northeast to the, you know, towards the southwest, uh, southeast towards the northwest. I'm sorry. So we're putting in the cul-de-sac. We've talked about how that's going to take care of it. Now we're putting the house there, right? So all the water is going to, and a rainstorm now is going to come rushing off the roof. And what do we do to keep that on the site? We, they don't want that to go off the site because it's groundwater and it has to. Um, they want to recharge groundwater. Recharge it. That's... So we put it in the infiltration system to slow it down. And then it goes, it permeates into the ground slowly from the, from the um, it's like a recharge area. So that's that's how you you know that's how you handle the groundwater. That's that's basically all we can do. It actually it ameliorates the situation, makes it better mm -hmm. by the development. And what happens with that, as uh, Rob said, when the cistern rises and gets filled with that, all happens independent of whether it is a development or not a that's development. Yeah. The, the 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 erection of the houses, construction of the houses, got nothing to do. With the flow of the ground, the water situation that people are concerned about. But the development with infiltration system is going to modify and decrease the water running off those particular lots. Correct. And then I'm I just lost track that after this it has to go before the board for the this the so water. water authority. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I do other board, I feel like I stolen the show. Other board members. Any other questions? I don't have any other questions at this point. Just that there's been a lot of discussion on this tonight, <clears throat> a lot of work by all parties, including the councils and the attorneys and the engineers, and obviously the neighbors on this one here. So I, I just feel like um, I'm not comfortable with approving this right now, but I think continuing it to get a little bit more clarification on what's going on and. A, I think what we did tonight, and I, I hope that the abutters and the neighbors that were in on this got a little bit more clarification on it, but I just think we need to kind of get a little bit more clarification on this one before we move forward on it. That's my opinion. Would the board be able to enumerate what the clarification is that is needed or requested so we're clear on what you're looking for? I think the neighbors have um, discussed an increase in um, basement flooding since the, and, and I, I'm assuming it's since the well stopped being drained, but I don't know what the correlation between those are because it's in, in I mean, just from high school physics, the water seeks its own level and is spilling out into the emergency overflow, which then eventually works its way into um, the street anyway. And it goes to the wetland. I, I, I can't imagine enough It water. goes to the wetland and the wetland comes to the street because mm -hmm. it doesn't just end right there where your green lines are. Yeah. I can't imagine that the, they're taking enough water out of there from that well to, to affect that. 
to affect the groundwater situation in that area. Yeah. It's, it's not a stream of trucks every day, all day being filled up in the past, from what I understand. Well, all the residents stated that they're, they've got water since the day that they moved in, not since the well's been closed. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what we're looking to further, uh, further lay out in front of the board. Yeah, the stormwater we discussed. Stormwater will be discussed for, further with the stormwater committee. Uh, any other, you know, we discussed um, conditions of approval for drainage systems for lot one. Um, oh. And I think some uh, movement towards the abandonment of ridge, which would then create a permanent tree line. We, we agree to that. And board, this is, this yeah. is why you get the so big money. I, I, this is why you get the big money. Yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like we've addressed a lot of their concerns, um, including the drain water, since they're going to improve the drainage. They're going to uh, get approval from Megan for the broken drain system. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Air yeah, condition. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, infiltration systems. Mm -hmm. uh, sprinkler two of the houses for safety. Um, Stormwater, groundwater. We didn't really. I don't think we really got a. Uh, condition for that, did we? For the interaction of the stormwater and the groundwater? Well, yeah. we we're asking that the lot one show uh, or that a lot one is conditioned to require um, roof runoff recharge. Rob, that'll come up in stormwater anyways. I yes, don't mind yes, it will. just asking more or less. Yeah, it will. It will. Okay, so um, that's and then the abandonment of ridge for the trees, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions, comments? I think a lot of the conditions you just outlined would um, benefit the, the proposal that we have. And I'd like to move forward um, with the plans that we have, knowing that we have to go to stormwater as well. Um, Madam Chair, have you closed the public comment period? No, not yet. Okay, I've, uh, Douglas Wage, uh, Wedge, excuse me would like to readdress and I'm gonna unlock his microphone and we're hoping not to get to a point tit for tat and uh, no real quick. Kind of point. real, real quick you, uh, just real quick the attorney's timeline on the uh, hearing all this information was incorrect we went to zoning then we went to the conservation now we're with you he said we had all this information prior to meeting with you uh, and all the residents that were at zoning board had this information. That's not true. And secondly, nobody's addressed, just, just tangentially, they've addressed the fact that when they dynamite, which they're going to have to, we've already told you what's up here, what it's going to do to the groundwater, adding on top of water, they're not no longer drawing out of that spring. So you're not drawing out water from the spring. It sits there. Now you add these 100 year events that are happening every five and 10 years. The water issue will change somehow. Some agency, some engineering firm, someone has to be out there that can say that this is not going to be an issue. And if it is an issue, there needs to be a mitigation fund. Thank you for your oh. time. Yes, thank you. thank you for reminding me on the mitigation fund. But bef 
also one of the conditions, um, Mr. Rockwood, is that, I see your name, I don't. Uh, Jason, um, Jason, Jason Kennedy. Um, you said you might not be blasting if you do raised ranches. So uh, would you be comfortable with that being one of the conditions? No blasting, the, the, the houses would be raised ranches? Uh, no, I'm not comfortable. No, I, I think that's well, far beyond what the planning board can impose. I, I'm a, it's just, I'm asking Attorney Nazarella. I'm trying to work with you, not against well, you. Well, and I appreciate that. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify what the law is. That's that's yeah. just not something that's appropriate for a planning board to, to request. That well, That is, Mr. Nazarella is correct. It, it's the, the road and the utilities and the frontage and... You know, additional things, you know, are, are nice. Uh, right. Because and we're trying to be, because, we're all trying to play nice in the sandbox. Because here, you're, asking I was just asking. Extra, you're asking for a waiver because you're extending the street. Uh, um, and I realize yeah. that there's benefit to us and benefit to you for doing that. Madam Chair, I believe, I don't know if it was part of the, part of the submittal package, but uh, Mr. Kennedy does have a letter from a hydrogeologist about the the uh, the runoff from the well, the overflow from the well. Did you get a copy of that? Okay, so you have that letter, correct? Packet. Um, yeah, we we <laughs> um, had that when we were at conservation. And to what the previous resident said, all of this information is public knowledge. That's why they're notified so that they can go to the town hall and look at the plants. That's part of our process, the legal due diligence that we have to do. So we have provided a lot of opportunity to have these plans reviewed. And I have okay. hired these professionals that earn their living by designing these, the roads, the drainage. Um, they are not just shooting off the hip. This is all, what this is what they do to provide for their families. I feel like we've addressed a lot of these I, items. I'm comfortable with the um, stormwater and the surface water runoff situation it's it's the groundwater that i have no understanding of and control of um, and i'm just saying that to to the board members um and i don't know who who would well i think that 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 letter from the professional would shed some light on that no jason he basically states that how much water is coming out of that overflow and um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was somewhere between two and 4,000 gallons a day. And it I hasn't changed. No. And it has not changed in years. It's pretty constant. But we address that in conservation. And right. But I think to assuage the planning board members, I mean, you know, that's, that's a letter that might help. Okay. And just for the record, it wasn't my idea on the raised ranches. It was yours, Jason, and I thought it was a good, good one. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> okay. yeah um, I think it. I, I think it was just the way it was worded, Madam Chair, where you said, you know, no blasting if there was raised ranches. And I think Jason's saying I can't guarantee that there's not going to be any blasting because we don't know what's out there yet. That's correct. Um, and I do want to point out, uh, I'm I answering a, a message online about the city engineer taking a look at it. Um, you know, this had been reviewed by the Conservation Commission, which had an independent third party data um, engineering take a look at this. Um, it, it primarily how it affected the, the stormwater in the wetlands, or excuse me, uh, water in the wetlands. Um, but it will need to go back for a uh, stormwater permit, and that is before the sit that was before the city engineer, and so it will have more um, more review at that point in time. Okay, good. Um, so that's how that gets addressed. When mm -hmm. earlier yes. we said we didn't know how the study would be done, that is it right there. Yeah, you know, Madam Chairwoman, the only thing I was concerned about and why I expressed myself, I have seen in the past when, when boards go a little beyond with good intent, but go beyond the borderline, it's possible to run into contradictory uh, uh, rulings between one board or the other board, 
for what the ZBA already made rulings, CONCON made rulings, you're gonna go before stormwater. If we start getting contradictory rulings, it becomes a circular firing squad amongst ourselves in the boards. And that's what I'm trying to prevent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, and I also would uh, you know, submit, we rely on the, the letter and findings of the hydrologist, you know, a scientific expert who made a, who made a ruling, who made a, a determination. And uh, just to add a little lightness to the whole conversation reminds me of the, the statement uh, made by Otto von Werner, who worked under President Kennedy developing the NASA moonshot. And he once said, one scientific experiment is far greater than a thousand opinions. And I think that's where we are at this point in time. Let's rely on the experts. Oh boy. Um, Madam Chair, if, if we're going, I, I don't know if you're going to move forward with this or not, but one thing I would recommend is that before they go to the Stormwater Authority, that we determine where the intermittent stream stops as it goes south on Arthur, or excuse me, west on Arthur, and how that water from the intermittent stream either enters the stormwater system or, or, or where it goes, because it doesn't just disappear. All right, that was a lot. I got part of that down, Evan. I hope you are taking good notes. Um, so let me just ask if Michelle Dubois, she still wants to speak because uh, she was gonna go after me, uh, but nothing that we've already heard. She was going to speak after you. She wasn't going to go after you necessarily. <laughs> well, I was just finishing what I was saying and then she was up Right, there. right. Right. Okay, so Representative Dubois. Well, I respect your time and I respect um, Chairwoman Gonsalves and all the work that everybody's putting put onto this. Um, in the comments, I see, I just am Michelle Dubois. I live on Bank Street, right down the street from this um, project. I'm asking the members of the board to deny any and all requests for waivers before before you this evening. I think there's a waiver for an extension of the roadway and a waiver for some dead end thing. Whatever waivers you have before you, I'm asking you to deny them. I'm also asking that if this does um, get postponed and you don't vote on it this evening, that you get an independent um, analysis from the city, uh, the engineer, as to what different water issues are at play. I think there are some questions um, I have, and I'm going to follow up with him myself. It's nothing <clears throat> political at all. It's This is what public service is, in case you didn't know. Uh, Jason. And so that is all I have to say this evening. I ask that you deny the waivers and I thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. Um, and just to remind you. the board, the waivers, um, just the, the dead end extension to 1300 feet, correct? And uh, the sidewalk on one side only of the cul-de-sac. Yes. And, and to the board, this project does not go forward without the 700 foot dead end extension. Madam Chair. Yes. Just to address what Morella uh, <clears throat> said, there is no regulation, there is no law that requires the sprinklers, but when we were confronted with the two cul-de-sacs on the west side, we were asked to investigate and we determined um, that our answer on cul-de-sacs being extended past the 700 foot rule, uh, which was made long, long ago, um, would be that any new house would be um, sprinkled with residential sprinklers. The cost really isn't that bad. Uh, I think the developer on the west side has found it um, not, not a bad option whatsoever, but that's the fire department's um, stance on extending, giving the waiver to extend the road past the 700 feet. I remember that, that those projects on the west and, side. Thank you. And just as a re reminder for the public who's listening, when it's a commercial development, all your um, fire protection is in, <laughs> uh, is in iron pipe. And um, in this case for residential under a certain number of, of square footage, and Eddie, please correct me if I'm wrong, it can be a, a PEX type tubing. 
Co correct. It could be a, a plastic tubing. It can be included in the regular plumbing of the house. Um, it can be run off a tank and not the domestic water. There's many options um, to look at, but it's all under one particular NFPA standard. Yeah, but it's it's not billions of dollars. No, it's not. All right, so we're going to close the public sec public part of this and move back to the planning board members. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, we're going to need help here on this one with uh, the staff because I just feel like my opinion we're going to need to continue this, but we need to be clear why we're continuing it so that way the applicant and his legal counsel and the engineers know where we're going with this. And I think it's for the best of the board and for the city to do that. But we're going to need help with the staff on what's going to be required moving forward on a continuance because there's been a lot of things that have gone. I feel like I've just gone through a two hour tech meeting. So, then, um, Evan, I, I hope you've been taking notes. Could you fill in? Just I've been chatting and not noting because I don't want to just say we're continuing <clears throat> for the sake of continuing because there's a lot of opposition and maybe some unclear information on it. So we're going to be real clear on that. And, and uh, in fairness to both sides, that's my opinion. I would, I would agree with that, Larry. There's, this seems to be, we've talked about just about everything. Um, and, I, and I think we're at the middle of the road right here where we need, you know, solid clarification on the most, uh, the items that stand up the most, obviously. Which are just, we all want to be on the same page. So if we Evan, can narrow it down. Evan, could you give him the list? Well, I wrote everything down that they were talking about uh, as conditions, but I'm not sure if this is like, clarification for next time we talked well, about the swale the infiltration systems the pipe sprinklers but uh i'm not sure i guess i think we've agreed to all of those right i'm not sure i guess what they can do to the plan between this meeting well, and next meeting that that's, will satisfy that's my question them. Rob, I thought the the uh, water items like the drainage were going to be addressed with stormwater I mean, we're yeah, actually correct. to the end of this road. Yeah. It's um, not Evan, a huge impact. I am not doing 40 houses. I'm not doing a big commercial property. Um, there are so many other options. This is a minimal impact compared to other options. There's two. Okay. I don't. Uh, I, it, 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 it sounds like I'm putting in a mall. <laughs> I mean, that's, Evan, that's my hand up. That's not, not a staff. Not, not only for um, the board members, but also for the community. The, could you just review what's going to happen at the Brockton Storm Water Ordinance meeting? That's really where they're going to do the validation of the that, water. That's, yeah, everything to do with the drains, everything, uh, drainage, everything to do basically where storm water, when it rains, where that water goes and ends up. Has so, to. So. So that's, um, okay. that's, not, that's not what we're approving and that's not what we're saying is good um, so that the community and um, both Larry and Jim also understand that's not in our hands. Yeah, that's right. a little Madam, bit out of, Madam, uh, go ahead, Rob. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, while this project is going to have to go through the, the stormwater authority for its stormwater permit, and that of course should be a condition of any approval. Um, I think the one reason we would want to continue this to the January meeting, and given the fact that nobody's gonna be digging anything anyway in January and December, or December and January, is to get some sort of statement out of the city engineer about the groundwater. We, we, we did hire a hydrologist that we provided documentation to the town regarding the water table. This was at the conservation meeting. Um, uh, Greg, you could probably pull that up on the screen. Um, yeah, I say, I say we look at it. That's, that's, well, I don't want to. Well, I, 
the, I say the, we the continue neighbors it and hear it from the city engineer and early when I asked if there was such a study that could be done I was told no and now you're saying you hired a hydrologist whatever you just said yes okay. so now earlier there wasn't anyone to do a study but now you said you hired someone so now I'm really confused so I think continuing listening and hearing it from the city engineer would be uh all right it's 30 days I'd like to have Chike look at that we've addressed all the other issues it's it's really the groundwater that is is standing out there, and that, that I'm not an engineer. I can't answer that. So, so we can't get any clearer than that. So if we provide um, Chike with um, the letter that Jason has from the the hydrogeologist, and Chike gives his opinion. I mean, is that the goal that we're going towards? Does yes. that make sense? Not as a opinion or a clarification confirming that right. there's not going to be it's not going to be detrimental yeah okay levels water yeah. levels his professional the opinion right okay all right so is there a motion to continue motion to continue second okay roll call larry Hassan? yes jim swinney yes Tony Gonzalez, yes. Uh, thank you, board, for your time tonight. I know it went really late. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. So, um, oh, God, we have funny. a date. Do we have a date? Yeah, January uh, 19th. January 19th. 19th. January 19th. Okay. But this also includes this, like, one through eight that we just talked about. Yes. Um, okay. Those are conditions, right? Yes. Yeah. No, so, we're aware of those. So, Evan, um, and help me here, Rob, if I've because I just I did take shorthand. Um, the broken drain, drain system, but first you go to conservation to Megan. Infiltration set drains, sprinkler, the two houses. Um, something about um, drainage off the roofs. Yeah, that's the same thing as the infiltration. Infiltration. Oh, okay. Yep. Fancy language. Um, the abandonment of the ridge to preserve the trees, right? Yes. Yeah. Rob, you said something about determining when <coughs> something stops and enters. I can't even read my own oh, writing. Um, the intermittent stream. Where the intermittent stream ends down downstream. Thank you. And Madam Chair, and I think the staff had already made a few notes about making sure the applicant will still go through the, and provide the documentation on the declassification of the well with the mass DEP. I think that was like yeah. one. Uh, Evan, you got that? I, I'm sure I that do. Um, the, the staff can provide this information. We don't have to go, do we have to go through all this right now that they'll provide this information? So. We'll have it on the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You'll this is all recorded, so we can go back and right. grab the actual wording right. from all this and prepare right. it. Yeah, could maybe we get a list from you, Evan, for uh, sure. You know, sometime this week or something. One point of clarification, if I may, uh, to Deputy Chief Williams: Does the the uh, request for the sprinkled sprinkle houses dependent or independent on whether or not there's a fire hydrant in the area? No, it has nothing to do with the fire hydrant, Phil. It's the, the length of the, the extra length of the street. Yeah, but if you have a fire hydrant there, well, I don't know, understand the purpose of the, the sprinkled, uh, you know, so you have access to addressing a, an issue if it arises. I just, uh, I'm trying to figure out the rationale for the well, the, the well, sprinkler we, we, will put out the fire before it gets there. Oh, well, they're pretty fast. It, it, it's designed to get people out of the house in time, and I I don't know what the water flow is on top of the. Um, I I think it would not be that great on top of the uh, hill, if you will. So we may have to stretch lines in from uh, Sawtell Avenue, um, where it's more level and we'll have more pressure. It's it's it's. Uh, Crossfed there, where and that's why I was inquiring about the crossfed, um, trying to crossfeed it up um, on from the other side that we determined we probably couldn't do. 
So the longer you push water, the higher you push it up, the less velocity you're going to get and the less pressure you're going to have. Thank you. All right. I think that's That's it, it for this subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for your time. Have a good night. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. That was the end. Uh -huh. Larry Assan. Uh, yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Good night, everyone. Thank good you. Good night, everyone. everyone.